And when Kanye was like, he made some song where he was like, you put all your money into this dude, and then as soon as he gets on, he dumps your ass for a white girl. That's Gold and Digger. That yeah. Gold Digger song. So I was like, he's not lying because it happens a lot mm -hmm. where women who sacrifice their whole life to because they think it's going to help them. They're going to build a family. Let me help him get on. And then when he gets on, then he'll help me get on. But it's never the reciprocal. And a guy said this to me. A lot of times guys have sex with a lot of girls, not because they find pleasure in it. It's just because they want to tell their friends that they had sex with this hot girl or they did this with this chick or whatever. So they're really not even having sex with women because of the woman. They're doing it so they can brag about what they did with that woman. That's part of it. It's also, I think, um, guys... If if you can do it, you know, if you have the ability to, because not all guys have the ability to just randomly have sex with a bunch of women. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, not everyone has that. Uh, so, but if you do have that, you still, it's it's about emotional attachment too. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oftentimes what winds up happening is like, you know, they might be, they might believe in romance and all that sort of stuff and they get their heart broken because girls also yeah, you know they girls, they're, girls can be too. players too you know what i mean right. so and i think it becomes this like like the this hurt people hurt people kind of situation mm -hmm. where on one hand both parties don't want to have that emotional attachment because even though love feels great heartbreak doesn't right. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Evil Eye, at the Underlab Podcast with my friend, Crystal Jodon. How do you, how do you, <laughs> did I say uh -huh. that right? <laughs> I, I, every time, every time I, I read your, your uh, name, I, I feel I need to do a little French, French to it. Jodon. Jodon. But you can just say Jodon. Jodon. I'm from Georgia. Okay. Jodon. <laughs> Jodon. <laughs> Okay, so um, I guess uh, let's start off with you. Tell us a little bit about, about yourself. Uh, you know, why are you here talking to me? Oh, why am I here? <laughs> well, um, I'm an artist and um, I run an artist nonprofit. And um, I'm going to try not to say um so much. It's well, okay. Just be free. You're free. You're free to ums and ahs and oohs. All right. <laughs> well, I'm a professional educator. That's mm -hmm. my government. And uh, I've been working as an independent artist, uh, promoter of the arts, random chick about town um, for about 15 years. I've been living here. And before I moved here, I did some art shows in Atlanta, but... I really didn't start doing my own art shows and, until I moved here. Like, I would be in other shows, but the first time I put on my own shows, I did them when I moved here. And um, Fort Lauderdale has been good to me. I've met some really cool people and a lot of independent thinkers I've mm. met here. Um, I guess it's the water, the beach and the air and the sunshine. I've met some crazy people too. I can't even. Find That's what I was gonna say. Weird. You know that that attracts another uh, yeah. group of people too. <laughs> I mean, I get a little I'm, bit of everything. A little the spice of life. You know I what I mean? I missed Atlanta when I first moved here, but then I don't really miss it anymore. Because what I missed, I realized was a point in time when I actually lived there, and it's not that anymore. Mm. And sometimes we romanticize things that. We remember it, but they're not like that anymore. Well, what what do you think has changed? Is it, what do you say it got better or worse? Like, it, like I imagine, well, like those cities have been pro pretty prosperous since they Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, but I enjoyed Atlanta in the '80s and '90s when I was coming up. It was a cultural hub, you know. If you were young, black, and free, then it the whole world was open to you. You know, mm -hmm. um, music was new. You didn't really have to feel like the odd man out because it's like a chocolate city and chocolate people doing a lot of different chocolate things. You have your rich people, your poor people, your 
ghetto people, you're elitist, you know, it's it's so full of people that you have every kind of person you could imagine. Like on my street, there's probably a lot like I don't know, something out of Leave It to Beaver, but with just like all black people and the occasional <laughs> like non-black person. But um, because of segregation and stuff like that, when my parents bought our house, like black people were starting to move into that area. Mm-hmm. But then like all the white people left. And then when they left, all the banks and shit left. And then it just kind of like was hard for a minute but now with gentrification over the past 20 years the city is starting to look like i guess a model city now but Mm. so i mean so would you say there are some benefits of gentrification or well my parents can sell their house for a lot more money than they bought it for like when they bought that house in the 70s it was worth like 54 Mm -hmm. now they can get almost half a mil for it wow so um and it's the same five bedroom three bathroom house you know it didn't get bigger they had it updated but that's a massive amount of change in 40 years like you know and it's mostly inflation but You know, when you really try to sell your property for that, do you really get it, you know, in this economy? They tell you you could get it because they want to raise the taxes and make you pay taxes on a half a million dollars. I mean, you could could probably put it up in the market for that much. And is it it going to sell? Yeah. Somebody to buy it. Yeah. But. And then within those 10 years, you don't know how, what the economy is going to do to the value of the house. No, you don't. And my parents don't sell property. They don't believe in selling land. You got to keep the land for the family. (laughs) If anything happens, we can all live here and grow food and hunt squirrels. I mean, (laughs) you know, but there's like when a zombie apocalypse goes, you have, you know, happens when that happens. We move down south to the family land, 33 acres of wooded area we just burn that shit down and make sure we don't see any dead people cropping up you can see all the way out like literally it's like 33 acres of flat land and you know farmland and stuff like that there's a zombie apocalypse we just head for the river and burn everything else down you know damn you gotta you gotta plan you that <laughs> is amazing that you is have a, a plan My yeah look when the zombies come you have you have yeah. you're like oh we're gonna run the zombie drill yeah. you know? everybody get ready like, zombies are coming what are you gonna do what are you gonna go Crystal, <laughs> if anything happens just head here i'm like okay Bet, because I don't know how to hunt deer and shit. You know, I'll be well, there. I mean, <laughs> let's hope let's hope the zombies don't like deer. That's another thing. Like you know, this, during the zombie apocalypse, like a lot of like animals probably you don't see is in see enough of zombie animals. Eat deer. Well, they know how to get the hell away. Animals are smarter than us. They smell shit miles yeah. away, and they're like, oh, they'll bury themselves and here shit. Come those undead motherfuckers. Yeah. We we would tell the humans, but they keep trying to hunt us. So <laughs> bump them. Mountain goats just hang on the mountains and shit. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I These mean, zombies can't climb. <laughs> animals are just smarter. They'll figure it out. They'll they figure can it out. Smell like you know, and hear like deer like. And I'm sure one of them will come to to learn if you just smash their head in off. That's it. That's how you kill them. There'll be a bear going, come on, fuck. You ain't fuck. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, a bear is going to remember how to fuck up with a zombie. You know what I'm saying? I don't think a bear would have a problem. Like, have you seen a real bear in real life? No, not in real life. Oh, but. my God. It could fill up this room, and the claws are like the size of my hand, and they are not vegetarian. Let me just tell you, they will eat you, zombie yeah. or not, and you'll be bear baby. They'll food. probably be like, excellent. Like, oh, look, uh, like, zombies. Ooh, barbecue. Yeah, zombies. Tastes like meat. formaldehyde. This one was dead before. <laughs> Mm mm, spicy. Mm, spicy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but my yeah. brother Gregory is a survivalist. Like, he hunts, comes back with mystery bush meat. I'm like, I'm not eating that shit. I don't know where it was. If it didn't come from Publix, I'm not eating it, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am a city kid. Yeah. I go to the market or to, you know, I have someone there. else make my sandwich. Yo, public sandwiches are the bomb, though. Yeah, they are. Yeah, the bomb. 
I def- know. I ate one daily when I was pregnant. That's how you gain 80 pounds. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know what? They, they, I thought it was always marketed like the healthy options. You know what I mean? They yeah. lie. Well, maybe that Subway shit that's not real food anyway, but the Publix yeah. ones are like... I guess it also depends. Which, yo, that's a lot of carbs. That's the whole yeah, the whole point of the big ass fucking like bread. You know what I'm saying? When you're and, having a man sized baby, yeah, and you need all of those because even he still, popped out six feet. Almost, <laughs> uh, my youngest was eleven pounds. Damn, and like twenty one inches long. Whoa! So literally, like a little Shasta McNasty came marching up out of me. It was like, oh well. I guess I'm celibate. Fuck it. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's that. Fuck that. I made my choice. I found my calling in life. <laughs> it's called, I would love the shit out of somebody else's kids. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. So, okay. So, tell, tell me a little bit about the Art Mama Moves. Okay. Art Mama Moves was... My way of when I first started trying to put together something on my own when I moved here because I really didn't know a lot of people and um, just getting to meet people. I met like a lot of uh, alternative indie people who just happen to be artists. Mm -hmm. And I wanted us to get together and do art together and just kind of meeting a variety of people and talking to them and trying to pull all of these cool people together is how Art Mama Moves came about. Right. And it started out, it's kind of like a subversive political um, artist group where we really do pursue non-exploitive images of women and men. And, you know, it's not a lot of sexuality. It's more of like uh, an amorphous collection. If you see everybody's work together, yes, you see like, nudes and you see um expressions of art but there's not a lot of exploitation like you don't mm-hmm. just see big brown nipples dripping with honey i mean oh man i say you lost you me that's what, I, that's what i'm looking for and it's so <laughs> weird because people have asked me before if i think of myself as a black artist i'm like well how do you think about that i am a black artist yeah, that's the thing, man. How and if make- i do black art i'm like well if i'm black in my art what are they, are they thinking art. like freaking like uh those african freaking yeah, like, like which in itself can be a little that's african art though to me you know well not even just that but not the black, trend black of art. just sexuality being pervasive throughout what people call black art Right. And they're used to seeing certain themes in quote unquote black art. Like it has to be political or um, it has to show expressions of black love or sensuality or something like that. Whereas most of my art is really more an expression of chaos or even a cellular movement or emotional states that I may have had or observed it's not really something limited to my perspective as a woman or a Mm -hmm. human or a black woman or anything like that it's just kind of like a weird me when it comes out but if that makes you question my blackness that's your fault because everything i do if it comes from me then it becomes black art yeah because i identify (laughs) as a black person who makes art i don't think i have to fit into a stereotype of what people imagine black art should be and some of my favorite artists have struggled with that like um because there's always a mainstream and there's always a protectorate of the culture Mm. and people look to them kind of like how people look to someone like Kanye West to be that voice of that, that movement. So at one point, you know, during the Harlem Renaissance, you have all the people that everybody knows, Langston Hughes, everybody knows his name, everybody knows all these people. But then there was always like an underground, other people who were making art at the same time, but because they weren't part of that, 
like that click. There's always an art click. And okay, I, hold on. Before mm-hmm. you, uh, like, what is? I'm dumb. What's the art Harlem underground? Uh, oh, the Harlem Renaissance yeah. was a big time, like in the 1920s, when African American artists, singers, musicians were really getting popular and hitting the scene. And um, have you ever seen that movie, The Cotton Club? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Cotton Club was a segregated club that black people worked in but were not allowed to hang out in. Okay, yeah. And there were a lot of them like that. And Harlem was the place where people like Duke Ellington and those types of musicians came from. So there was that mainstream vibe at that time. But there was were, well, Harlem was Harlem Nights a ba- uh, like the kind of yeah, it was happening around that same time period. Mm. So I think in that movie they even have like a Count Basie or um, a big band person was in right. that. Yeah, movie. that's what it reminded me. So, of. but then in the sixties and seventies there was another renaissance of black art, um, and a lot of people that you may hear about now came from that school, the people that you would see in museums and galleries now. But Mm. there are a few African-American women, and I wish that Faith Ringgold is is an example. And she talks about how she was excluded or pushed out of certain things because she didn't fit into that established narrative of um, she wasn't part of that clique. And when I saw her talk about it in this documentary, Black Art in America, I was like, so there is a gatekeeping process and there are people who are excluded or not even on purpose, but because they don't fit that narrative. Yeah. Like, I came up with a lot of artists and quite a few of them make a name for themselves using like um, either 1970s styles, um, like vintage black beauty, um, a lot of sensuality, old, like um, what I would consider exploitive pictures of uh, just naked black bodies in sexual ways. And at the time, it was political. But isn't that true for many other different, like... Just yeah. in general, women were like kind of uh, picking that. Yeah. But when you put it in a, when you question me as a, a black female artist, why don't I do those things? Mm. It's just because it never occurred to right. me. It wasn't like a conscious choice. Like, I'm not going to paint titties. <laughs> it's just not, you know, it's not where my brain goes. Like in this painting, this was like, I used to watch the Muppet show a lot. And one of the characters was Janice. And she had like the California thing, blonde hair and her boyfriend was Floyd. And they were like in this band together. But then I was thinking, what would happen if Janice and Floyd got married and she ended up quitting the band and she started to miss it? So, OK, like, hold on. So let's let's introduce this. This we're going to do this as the intro video to your uh, website and your. OK, so let's let's watch this real quick. Let it play. And um you, you could like scroll past the music so it doesn't cause that. No, don't worry about it. it it's it'll play. It it'll play fine. Okay. But at like the, remember I'm downloading this and yeah, adding yeah, yeah. it separately, you know. Oh, okay. Well, if you ever see a picture of Janice, that's her face. But she is different now because she's a mom, you know. And that one picture of the eye that's all stressed out. That was. What's the name of this band? No Good Babies. No Good Babies. I like it. Mm-hmm. They're both like really good musicians. You know? Oh, so it's like a two, uh, 
a two person band. Mm -hmm. Like, kind of like the White Stripes and uh, Black Keys. Yeah. They, I mean, their sounds but a they little. But they play other instruments. So right. the drummer, Shelly, also is like a one man band. She could play like a whole bunch of stuff by herself, too. And she has videos on our show. I like her. It's like reverse white stripes. It's a female lead. Yeah. With the, yeah. It, and it was cool because they, when um, quarantine was going on, I was calling around. Zoe actually told me about their band Pearl Earl. Mm. And they were like, well, Pearl Earl is, we're all split up, but we do music together. And they didn't have a name, so they came up with No Good Babies after their cats. And um, they were like, Crystal, thank you for giving us a chance to like express ourselves. So I was like, oh, I feel so honored. Yep, yeah. Yeah, so now they have this band that they tour with, just the two of them, and they tour with other bands. Oh, really? Yeah, so they actually put together this two piece during quarantine to play on the show. And it was the shit. Okay, so they submitted this the video that goes up. So mm -hmm. like people submit videos to you, mm -hmm. and then you make a like a nice little. Um, this is promo. the first time I put my stuff with anybody's video. Usually, I just play the video. Right. We usually just play the videos, but I was trying to find a way to make it look cooler. Mm -hmm. So, I was just. I mean, around. I think I I like this. You know, you 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 put in. The video, and then you like kind of show off some art and stuff on the side, right? I I would like to remember how I did that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, oh look. I mean, it, just, it, it seems like a so you could do it in. Pre I use Premiere and After Effects. I don't know what. what oh, there's this all was these really other the basic Canva. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, Canva. I mean, I don't know. I, I everyone keeps talking about Canva. I'm like, and I be I look at it I'm like, yeah, it's like really easy, simple to like make easy shit, you know. That's why I, I like to like, yo, I, I wish that I was less busy because then I could do like more experimenting with how to make the videos look cool. But now, you know, I have to leave that to the experts. But then the rest is like a slideshow of the rest of the paintings in this video. OK, let's watch that then. Um, But I don't remember if there's any more music. Well, it sounded like some music. It sounded like a different. To it sounded like music. a different track. Like, okay, how many songs did we put? In, you know? Uh, uh, it's just the fade out. I think. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I forgot I put writing on this one. Can can you? I I can't read. Oh, my name is Crystal Jadon, and I'm a mere mortal, divinely feminine spirit existing in human form. And this painting is called Janice as a Mom. And the okay, this is your art. Yeah, okay, and body this autonomy. is our show, Body Autonomy. And I guess this is when I was first trying to put together the show. Mm. And um, it's like, uh, I guess this is a story. Like me, most of you probably assume that as an adult, you could do as you please, especially to your own body. And um, this is the premise for our body autonomy. Mm. And uh, this slide says... Remember when you were a kid and all you wanted to do was grow up? Like me, most of you probably assumed that as, a, that as an adult, you could do as you please, especially to your own body. Things like getting tattoos or having your first beer were probably at the top of the list. Or like me, getting to vote for the first time. And uh, this is... Yeah, Janice as a Mom is the name of this piece. And it's really if Janice from The Muppet Show was a mom and had to give up being in the band, how would she feel about that? Does she feel <laughs> fulfilled? Mm -hmm. And you could tell that she doesn't have like that fun look in her eye. Anymore. Well, it also seems like she's like fake smiling. 
Yeah, that's a fake smile. And then the, the bottom panel, you can see like the real stress in her face, like, mm. oh my God. And then the other one is like literally a heart dying. Oh. So, and it's not a big painting. It's only about this big. So I carry it around with me all the time. And I'm not sure if anyone wants to buy it, but I still like it. I might just keep it. <laughs> <laughs> well, who knows, you know. Let's but I what, can what, identify with that, you know, being a mom, you you have to make space for other people in your life and not just be able to be in your band and, you know, do all that. You could, but at the expense sometimes, of Yeah, sometimes you, you, it's almost like it's like you give up your dreams to, uh, and uh, for a greater effort or some, some people would say a greater effort. I think most women do it out of habit, like um, because we see our moms do it, so we think that's. What do you think there's do. even though? Okay, it's great that you know you have kids and they bring you all this extra, you know, uh, feeling to your life. And also, then and the other flip side, it could also give some sort of regret, like, damn, I could have done this, I could have done that. I had to, I had to give up my. You know, my dream of being a drummer for the Muppets. Well So now I gotta raise this kid. And if they don't if they don't appreciate your your sacrifice too, <laughs> it makes it a little harder, right? Well my kids do, and I didn't really have to give up a lot except well, mostly because I have a really good family and really nice people to help me. And um when I had Akko, I do believe that it saved my life. Mm. Him, me becoming a mom saved my life, literally. Because I was just like a rave kid, you know, totally just waiting tables and hanging out and partying all the time. And then when Wait, I became a mom... Thing? Huh? Are you talking in this video? Am I? Oh, yeah. But it's just mumbling. <laughs> it's like me explaining it's part of, it. It's part of your I, piece. You yeah. Mumbling. What I do with these videos, sometimes I just shoot them and then I go back and then I try to put them in other videos. What is this? Oh, man, we missed we miss a slide. Hold oh, on. Back up, back up, back up. Of course, that slide's like three seconds fast. I know, right? <laughs> it's like, but then it sinks in that growing up isn't all it's cracked up to be. There's still a bunch of folks who think they can tell you what to do. Even if it's none of their gosh darn business, and that's a self portrait. That's self portrait number two. And Did you have like punk rock purple hair before? Yeah. Like, <laughs> see, that's me now in the background, just kind of blending in. That's and, in the morning and looking out. But then, like in my youth, I really was that kind of rebel chick. But now there's the two faces together, and I guess that's me. There's a bunch of other faces in there too. Well, okay, I see some. I see is what what's this right here going on? There's like eyes. I seen an eye, eye, and a nose right there. Is that did I catch that? There's a lot of eyes. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I do the eye. A lot of artists do the eye thing. You know, there's something about it eyes. It was the first thing I learned how to draw when I was a kid. Eye. I was just always, and then it was just one eye, and it was like that Coptic eye, and then I started trying to make a whole face. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But even when I don't realize that there's eyes, there's always eyes. I don't even know I'm putting them, putting them there sometimes. I think it's kind of... I see, um, but it, 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 did I catch... Oh, go ahead. Oh, some of these people are called politicians, or as my uncle would say, bullshit artists. Not one of these so-called guardians of democracy can be trusted. And I, for one, am tired of the tomfoolery. When asked to wear a mask, you know, to promote the general health, these greedy succubi jumped on the loudest bandwagon. My body, my choice, they said. Stop big government. The hypocrites. They're all a bunch of hypocrites. Oh, and some more pictures. So what's going on here? The the two pieces that I focused on are here. That's self-portrait number T. And then I just thought that was a cool messed up picture of the first one. But this is an election year and it's time to cull the herd. Let's get rid of them. Mm. They need to be. Let's give this adulthood thing another try. This time, let's read more and talk less. 
Stop watching the clowns sing and dance, argue and pontificate, primp and preen. Some of those TikTok videos get on my nerves. Let's have some real discussions. I'm so sick of the boys against the girls, misogyny and race baiting. I'm not the most adult-like grown up, but our children deserve better. Who that is? Sandy performed at the show. You took that video. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, now I remember. <laughs> so apparently this was from show 93. And then there's a promo at the end. And that's Gay Paisley. She's a photographer. So, okay, so that's... This is it. This is the promo. So, Obina, me and Amanda. Oh, that's Pearl Earl. I like the, the rock shake vibe. Yeah, it started off as mostly rocker chicks, you know. And then since the Jabari brothers, a.k.a. my kids, are like the tech team, they were like, Mom, you know, you have a lot of men in this group, you know. Do we have to keep it as a subversive pe female political uh, anti-hero? <laughs> and they sounded sin like sincerely concerned. And since I don't want to be the oppressor, I was like, okay. I don't want to be the oppressor. You know, it doesn't have to be all about my point of view. And then that's how we went from being a subversive political female artist group to being a more open-minded and human-centered you know, a lot of metaphysical thought, a lot of um, alternative living, just non-traditional people, just being weird as artists, like everybody should be. You know? Yeah. Uh, so, do you think um, eccentricity is a good foundation for being an artist, or you know? Well, it's mandatory for me. Okay. Well, taking that. But it's note. not necessary because I know some good some very good artists who are the most like mainstream people you would ever meet. Mm. Like um, my dad is a really good artist. Like he can draw realism, like doing that. In fact, when I was a kid, he used to do all of our projects and all that shit, but he never took art as a career thing. And he was, He's a very practical Capricorn dad. You know, he's mm. like, I'm going to be an engineer so I can take care of all these hungry ass kids and my wife and everybody else in the neighborhood. So it's he 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 is a very conservative person. But if he had been unfettered, you know what I'm saying? He could have probably been an amazing artist, but that wasn't his focus. Did he inspire um, you a lot uh, and, and move you a little bit more into the art? You know, our world a little bit? No. My parents, when I told them I wanted to be a photographer when I was a kid, my I think the reaction was more like, you can't get a job doing that. <laughs> <laughs> We're not paying for you to go to school to do that. You have to do that on your free time. So there was never this mystical, magical, we'll pay for you to get a bachelor in fine arts. No. No, you know what? <laughs> I think I think the the idea what what they should do and or whenever, like, let's say you, your kid is like, I want to pursue creative arts, whatever, you should t send them to business school. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, that is where the, that is what you're going to wind up doing is becoming a business person. Whether mm -hmm. you're, if you want to be, if you want to be an artist, you got to be get good at business because you're on your own. You know what I'm Basically, saying? You, you got to yeah. sell your, you got to know how to market, to you got to sell your stuff. Self. Yeah, you got to sell and yourself. You're, you're, you're start. You're, you're essentially starting a business mm -hmm. and your business is your art. And I, I, I wish, you know, like I didn't think about, about this until like a few years ago when I came to realizations, like, you know what, what I probably should have done is gone to business school and because the art was already kind of there. I could have practiced art. I could have learned art through other means, you know what I mean? But you can learn business the same way. Like learning business, the, the the hard knocks of learning business for like on your own without actual like uh, education is is a lot harder I think than the hard knocks of becoming an artist and like all the learning like you know what I'm saying? Like well, I, I, I would, think I would disagree because it's almost like how law school doesn't prepare you for being a lawyer. Mm. They tell you it does, but when I took the LSAT, it was mostly a test to see if you could think like a 25-year-old white man. Mm. And I was 
very quickly after I took it the first time and my score was pretty good. I just wasn't happy with it because I felt like there was something I didn't understand about this test and I test well, like in general. So I was like, okay, I made like a 142 or something like that. And that was enough to get into like, I guess somebody's law school. But I was like, nah, if I'm going to do this, I want to at least know. So I picked up the uh, practice book. Like you could get a Peterson's Guide for Mm -hmm. it. And I was reading through it. I was like, this is all just like mind fuck games. Like literally like they're called games. Mm -hmm. You're, You're supposed to figure out the logic, but you can't use your cultural background knowledge unless you are a 25 year old white man the question should be easier but wait you're talking not. about iq tests that no i'm talking about the lsat oh okay the okay. Le, the, the, the the test to get into law school oh, okay if you and people were like oh people go crazy doing it doing it i was like so you're I saying see they were culturally biased not even culturally biased it's trying to see if you can think that way and oh, okay. most people don't think that way logic the, critical thinking no not just logic that type of logic a specific type of logic mm. because i am very capable of using logic but i had to know what type of logic they needed and once i unlocked the key to that test my score went up but i had to change my mind completely and not think like crystal but think like a 25 year old white man and then when i did that or whatever stereotype i have Mm -hmm. i generally took the opposite answer of what i thought it would be and it would be right that's interesting i wish you could give me an example of that when you go to business school, they don't teach you the practical shit. Like, if you ever see that movie Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield. I love that movie. Okay. Yes. He was right. He was telling them. He's like, nah, you got to get with so-and-so in the back alley and get that shit for a third of what you're going to pay. Well, he's having a net, the networking aspect of things. The, but the that's business. Personal relations. When you, yeah, like the yeah. whole All the little analytical parts of running a business Mm -hmm. are done by specialists, CPAs, lawyers. These are the people that do all the little shit in the business. The businessman is the face of the business, is the person who makes the executive decisions. But that person may not be an expert in Mm. that field. They're just an expert at knowing how to run people how to run people, not necessarily how to make money, not necessarily how to get shit done. So that sounds like a psychology class. It is. <laughs> that sounds like y'all yeah, should get into it. And that makes sense. A lot of these like, um, you know, sales books and all that, they're, they're, they're pretty much uh, psych games. And, That's you how know, Trump you know. was able to justify Trump oh, yeah, Trump because he Trump was, was like, showing uh, them how to be shysty businessmen, yeah. you know, but it worked. Because I thought Trump used this technique I call the uh, neuro neuro linguistic programming and just like, certain ways how to phrase certain things and how to like elicit certain like so it, people yeah buy it's like into it's like a, it's like a ways to say things to bring put things into people's minds and it's almost like a hypnotic. Uh, form of speech, you know? That's what that guy Mark Rufo does. Remember I was telling you he creates these conservative talking points Mm -hmm. and he tells people literally, don't use that word. Use this word. It'll be more powerful. Don't use this phrase. Use this one because then you get an emotional response Mm -hmm. from people. And if you go into a place where there's a lot of conservative people and you use words like killing babies, Boom. Yeah. Now they're against abortion. Um, gay people touching your kids. Boom. Now you've created the issue yeah. that you don't want gay teachers because they might turn your child gay. Right. And, oh, boom. If your child is gay, we can fix them. You can put them in this camp where we beat the shit out of them and turn them straight again. Yeah. You know, mm. so if you if you know how to manipulate language and if you know how to manipulate weak-minded people 
it doesn't take much. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't take much to hypnotize a group of idiots. Um, that's why education isn't valued anymore. And I can say, just being a person who works in education, people put more value into their child's emotional delicacy than their academic prowess sometimes. You know, I would be concerned if my child did not have a running vocabulary for his age group. Mm -hmm. That was something that when he would speak to a teacher, he would be able to articulate what he's, you know, what we're talking about. Right. I should not have to use first grade words in a fourth grade classroom because you don't bother to talk to your children mm. in anything but baby talk. I personally That's interesting, yeah. don't baby talk children. I mean, not neither. Babies, not, when I was a I'm kid, like, wake up. younger, not a kid, younger. Yeah. I would talk to my <laughs> little brother like, like normal. a regular And my person. niece, I talk like, I don't, I just never, like maybe the very beginning, but usually I would like to just say it like, and like, even like when I was living with my brother-in-law, like, she was around and I would just be verbose. Like, I don't care if you don't understand, you're going to learn. You're going to pick up these words. You better pick it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because nobody's yeah. going to baby you. Yeah. You know, we have lost that teaching children to have fortitude. Like, it's so sad when a kid breaks all the way down, like, mm -hmm. can't survive because somebody doesn't like them or says something mean to them. Whereas when we were growing up, my mom taught me, if somebody says something to you, who cares? They don't pay your bills, you know? <laughs> right? And then there was always the comeback, your mama. You <laughs> might have to fight somebody, but they'll know not to say shit to you again. Like, your mama. You know, yeah. I don't like your face. Well, don't look at it. <laughs> Your mama's stupid. My mama beat your mama's ass. Go tell her. Go get her. You know, there was no like, oh, oh, God. She said, she said, my mama's stupid. Is she? Is she? If she's not, why do you care what this other, that other kid is definitely stupid. Why do you care what that kid says? Right. <laughs> so you you feel you feel kids are getting too coddled. Yes. I mean not even coddled because yes you should love your kid, but you have to teach them mm -hmm. that not everybody's going to be in love with you kid. Right. Some people are generally just never going to be on your side and you can either avoid them or antagonize them. Personally, I prefer to avoid people that yeah. don't like me because you're never going to have a positive interaction with them i mean you, but you also gotta you also gotta teach kids how to handle haters because right. they're gonna encounter haters all the time and either you're gonna be a type where you're either gonna be aggressive about it or you're gonna like be like you know go in your room and cry about it and you gotta find a nice little middle you, you know gotta find a southern way of saying god bless you honey <laughs> you know jesus saves <laughs> It'll be okay. I just love you. <laughs> yeah. You know, and people can really put you in your place. I just, I love how I grew up. You do something stupid and somebody goes, well, isn't that nice? <laughs> do you feel better? Well, it's okay, baby. We all, we all do silly things. Now go sit down before I take off my shoe and show you some religion. Okay, go over there and sit down, baby. It's a, just don't cry. Just don't cry. Oh, you know, you no. don't have to you don't have to be mean or nasty to get your point across. Right. I know people that don't like me and they may not even know that I know that they don't like me because I'm just like, hey girl. God bless you, honey. I know you called me a bitch yesterday, but that's okay, girl. It's okay. Jesus loves so you. So kill him with kindness. Or just don't give a shit. That's true, too. The less the less uh, shit you give, the more you uh, either piss people off and you attract more people. 
it's like a weird thing. Like the let the the more carefree you you present yourself, the more you'll actually get get ahead of life. The more the people want to steal your shit, your that's sunshine. True. Yeah, that's true. You'll you'll get those too. You get dark clouds. There's a there's a show. Uh, what they do in the dark, I think, with like oh, you know, yeah. what they do in the shadows. Oh um, yeah, with the vampires, the energy vampires. <laughs> oh, dude. When I saw that, I was like, yo, this is real. Like, I can, the, all these other amp, vampires, fake, whatever. Yeah. But that vampire, mm-hmm. that's real. I know those motherfuckers. You know? Me too. <laughs> and I had to quit dealing with them. Like, yeah. I, I was like cool with some people when I first moved here, but I would always fall asleep around them. Like, always like we're dead on at a party and i'm passed out like and then like um one of my friends was like like one of my friends friends from back in the day was like crystal you're probably fucking with some energy vampires for real like you said you'll be awake and having a good time and then you'll wake up like but nobody's drugged you you're just sleep like literally your whole like i would just yeah sometimes like, they come in packs too though you know but when i quit dealing with them like when i say i just cut that whole click off like i really totally just quit dealing with them no shade but i was like you're not gonna be feeding off of me because that is not cool like it would be different if you weren't depleting all my energy, leaving me with none. <laughs> but nah, you greedy bitch. You took yeah. all my energy. And then it wasn't just the taking of the energy. It's like you see people around you happy and dating and doing things, but you never do because they've stolen that from you. You know, mm. the whole time I was hanging out with those people, I never went on dates. I never did anything but hang out with them. It was lo- it was literally like I'm hanging out with people, but I'm really on my own. I wonder if uh, if it's almost also addicting to ta- to hang out with those type of people. Like yeah, you're almost is. like because you want friends. Yeah. And when I first moved here, I literally didn't know anybody, so I wanted to hang out and I wanted to know people, but this wasn't the right group because i wasn't getting anything out of it but i was giving a lot of energy to it and it's all fun and cool until you realize that it's not reciprocated Mm. and then when you realize that you're really just not part of the group you're just kind of feeding someone's need for your energy that's when you realize, well, that's when I realized I was like, well, fuck all y'all then. <laughs> Personally, I like myself too much to to just be your food. Right. You know, I don't really need that shit. I have real friends, you know. They may not be here, but I do have people that care about me. So when you start realizing that people are energy vampires, it's best to just leave them the fuck alone because even if you feel like, oh, man, I miss my friend, it's just an addiction. It's like a withdrawal. Yeah. Like, you miss having them in your life. It's almost like a toxic relationship, too. Yeah. You miss, sometimes, you miss that toxicity in a way. You know what I mean? But you won't miss it for long because yeah. <laughs> with any breakup, I give myself a good two weeks. Literally. Two weeks what? Two weeks to grieve, and then I'm like, fuck it. Damn. I'm not trying to have an extended relationship hangover. To me, that's bullshit. I'm like, look, I may not have a lot of shit going on in my life, but what I'm not going to do is hang around a motherfucker that dick me over. Yeah. And usually that's what happens because with me, I'm pretty loyal. As long as we're cool and everything's copacetic, then I'm in it to win it. You know, but if you show me your ass one too many times, I'm like, well, keep your ass right there and I'm walking (laughs) away. Just keep it out. Keep your open ass out, you (laughs) motherfucker. Feel the breeze as I walk away, bitch. And I might throw a brick at your ass. (laughs) It just depends on what cancer mood I'm in. If I'm like, oh, God. 
oh, I'm crying. I'll cry for like two weeks. Damn. And then I'll have a talk with myself like, bitch, fuck that. Get the fuck up and do something with yourself. This was the shit I tell myself. Like, you think that motherfucker's sitting around sad? Now nah, he's fucking somebody else. And you should be too. Go put on something naked and <laughs> attempt to flirt with people, even if you don't. Right. Even if you just sit there being awkward like I am 90% of the time, just like... <laughs> At least I'm not here thinking about this motherfucker. Yeah, you do gotta get get yourself out there. I'm bad with it. Like, I, I sometimes I um I just work myself out of it. You know what I mean? I'm like, yo, pff. I just like shift my focus into something else. And even though it's on the back of my mind, like, yeah, it you know what I mean? And like, I still sometimes mind. text my I'm sorry, but you're like, ah, oh, okay, a little. It's like a relapse, and then like hi- hyper focus back onto work is like. At the end of the day, that's what fucking matters, you know? a lot when I was younger so you grow up with like a shell like every time somebody dissed me it was just like well fuck that you know and people have really tried to break me down and make me feel like I wasn't enough and then Mm. just having my best friend was always like who gives a fuck what they think they ain't shit right You know, nobody's better than you. Nobody's worse. Nobody gets to tell you how to live your life. Nobody gets to be in your life if you don't want them there. Right. And sometimes people you want in your life don't want to be there. So you got to let them do their shit. Yeah, it's one of the weird dynamics of love and relationships. And even though I might have like cutting somebody off in two weeks is like a hard cut you might still have like residual emotional feelings. But mm-hmm. to me, I just have to kick that shit out. Yeah. Because I don't want to linger in that sadness. Yeah, that's, then, yeah, exactly. You don't want to do that. You know, I mean, sometimes like, you know, yeah, sometimes in in the dark when everything's silent, you know, you're left with all just your, your thoughts, thoughts, you know, like, that's oh. why it's like, ah, oh, no, that's why I start. F- and that's, I think that's what, uh, that's where art comes into play. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's a, uh, uh, very therapeutic for a lot of people to, you know, like do channel that energy into art in some way. Well, it doesn't matter what way, whether you're paint, doing a painting, you're writing a song, you're editing a video, whatever, whatever, t- whatever you need to ch- can channel that emotion to pull it out. Yeah, to pull it and out. It's like a catharsis. Yeah, you know? definitely. I, I find that to be a, you know, I, I guess that's been my uh, therapy for like forever, you know. It's like I just channel my energy to Into art, art. Yeah. instead of destroying stuff. Yeah, you know, which is fun too. Which but is fun. <laughs> I've taken a hammer to many of things. Just yeah, like, yo, you know. around here, I forgot. Uh, 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 there's um, a rage room. Mm-hmm. Oh. I would love to walk into. You ever watch that that movie Office Space? Yes. And when oh, you the know, copy machine. Yeah, the copy machine is like motherfucker. You know they play that freaking Dr. Dre track. I think it was Dr. Dre. <laughs> or, or was it Dr. Jerry and Scarface? I, I don't know which one of which one I think it was. It was Scarface. It was Scarface, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And they were being the fuck out of that. Like, yeah, man, I've been there. Where like I just want to fucking grab this thing. Like, it's been annoying the fuck out of me. You know, just like let me just smash it. But that's what you could do over there. You could bring your own stuff, or you pay a little bit extra, and they they have stuff. To and bring- also, if you have, also you could donate stuff over there. Like if you have junk shit, give it to yeah. them, and then and they'll make it part of the like the rage room. I, 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 maybe they'll buy it. I'm not sure. They should they should buy it, but it give you a little s- scratch for it. But, um, oh. but I, I imagine like yeah, you could just go there. I mean, 
I want to check it. I want to try it out because I'd I be looking. I, you know, it's also cathartic watching other people rage out. Oh, my gosh. I get a laugh. Like, it's just funny because I'll yeah. see people raging and I'm like, I've been there, dude. Come on. We breaking shit. Let's break some shit. Uh, well, it's it's, fun, it's like funny at the time until someone's fucking with the camera and you're like the viral fucking carrot of the year. <laughs> no, that's when you throw some shit at the person with the camera like, hey, cheese, bitch. <laughs> I need money for that shit oh, if you make I've, money. Oh <laughs> my God. I, I, people are just I, ridiculous with that recording shit. Like, people are straight up fighting, damn near killing each other, and 30 people are filming. That is disgusting to that's me. That's crazy. It's like, oh, so we're not helping people. We're well, just, wait, what are you going to do? You're going to jump in and try to stop? Like, two people in, fighting. Call like, the cops or some shit. Damn, you oh. just really letting people scrap it out to the death? Why? I, I would I, I would have to call the cops because to me, I would feel so... First of all, I don't even like boxing or fighting because if any of that shit gets on me, I'm going to pass out screaming. Ah! Your fucking <laughs> spit hit me in the fucking <laughs> eye! I mean, I'm that guy like, oh my God. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, man. No. no. Is that your blood? Ah! No, I can't. Oh, you're squeamish. Yes. Yeah. I, my own blood, everybody else's. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. So yeah. to watch people fight, I was like, oh my God. I can't. I don't know. I'm a spectator. Oh, God. <laughs> my parents taught me when you see a fight, you go the other way because mm. a bullet does not have a name. Uh, I'm, on I'm, it. I'm, sh- I'm sure I was told the same thing, but I just didn't listen. <laughs> and it saved my life one night because we were at a rooftop club and somebody was shooting up at the roof. Oh, that's and dumb. And people were fucking going over to see where they were shooting. I was like, that is stupidity. That is stupidity. That is that is different. That's I different. I walked right That's outside not a fight. and That's a... <laughs> left. All those motherfuckers got in my car. I'd be and like, drove okay, car. the sound's coming from over here. I'm going over there. <laughs> nope. I when I see a fight, I'm like, oop. Oh no, I I, I I'm I'm a definitely engage. Not engage. I would just I want to peek. I'd probably be the dummy with a fucking phone too. You know. But you know, you never because you never know. Maybe you're gonna capture something important. You know that, I'm like, like y'all you know? got it. There's 30 people shooting that shit. I'll see it on the news. Hope y'all make it. I mean, there's an argument to say that if it without that tendency, we wouldn't have uh, gotten so many footage of like police uh, brutality and stuff true. like that too. You know, but there's, a, there's something obscene about a group of people watching a fight and recording it. I could see if you were trying to. You know, get evidence, but that's not what's happening a lot of times. Oh, no, all right. A lot I was of times that people are scenario, egging yeah. on the fight and like holding their phones and literally, I guess, placing bets or whatever. I don't know. It just yeah. looks like a hot mess. Like, I, and then when I when I see the kids watching the other videos of other people fighting, I'm like, don't look at that. That's stupid. First of all. Look at all these idiots standing around recording this for your pleasure. Does mm-hmm. this make you happy to see people killing each other? Yeah, I mean murders. So. I wouldn't say. I, would, I guess I'm. I'm like. But I can't watch Squid right. Game or any of that shit or The Purge. I don't watch horror movies. Oh, I see, really I'm, can't. I, I love those movies. I here's the thing. I watch those movies and people's my. I laugh. Like usually, like most people are like, ah! right? The entire time I watch those horror movies, like it's a comedy to me. You know what I mean? Well, maybe Nightmare <laughs> on Elm Street. Like when I was in high school, somebody's like, Crystal, you should watch Nightmare on Elm Street. It's really not scary, man. It's funny. Yeah, Freddy Krueger is so, pretty funny. He's funny. You know what it is? Because Freddy Krueger is one of the villains, like the, out of all the slashers and slayers, he talks. Everyone else is just like, very robotic. They, they, don't, they don't talk. Jason doesn't talk. Liners. Michael Myers doesn't talk. You know what I mean? Like the uh, the Chainsaw Massacre guy didn't talk. No, none of them talked. But Freddy's got like these one liners. <laughs> the <laughs> you only know? one I saw was Nightmare on Elm Street three because my friend was specifically like, "It's not scary." Right. It's, and this was when it came out, probably like eighty seven, eighty eight, and. 
I was like, I am not watching that. So I when mean, I, I finally did, scary. I'm like this. And I'll like <laughs> hold my ear so I don't hear the screen. Oh, and then no. I'll close my eyes. I'm like, that's me at a horror movie. Yeah, you're you have complete adverse adverse reactions to violence I of any kind. Bitch out, quote unquote. Yeah. I'm like, ah! <laughs> And I was on a date watching 13 Ghosts and this <gasps> I love that. I, I love the original. Had to walk me through this movie. I watched the prequel part where they explain all the different ghosts. I was like, that's pretty cool that they explain all the different ghosts. Mm -hmm. Like the 13 ghosts all had backstories. So I was like, okay, that seems pretty cool. And then I was like, wait a minute. This violence is ramping up. What the fuck is going on? Well, ah! yeah. I mean, the whole the whole idea of, of ghosts, usually the only reason they exist that you're able to see is because they haven't crossed over to the... And usually it's because of some violent kind of acts. Traumatic. Yeah, they, they died in a very traumatic way. It was a good movie. You know? I just watched most of it like this, like... <laughs> or my date would just go, you might want to cover your eyes now. Don't <laughs> is it safe? Is Man, it all right. But see... see I grew up with my uncle li like literally taking me aside and forcing me to watch The Exorcist at like seven or eight years old. So at first I was like, and remember, I grew up in, I was a like very religious uh, background. Yeah. This is, watching this was a sin practically. So it was like both like appealing, like I'm doing something bad, but also scary. Like, scary. oh my God, what the hell is this? And then after that, it just started like, I just started like not caring. Like, by the time I saw Nightmare on Elm Street, it was a little scary, but I could I could see the humor in it. Now, like almost all all the movies that I see that are like horror related, it's just like okay, you gotta up the ante for me, boy, because this is like. <laughs> I know? had nightmares from the time I was nine till I was twelve, and I had to teach myself how not to have nightmares just by walking oh. by. What was that movie where the girl got covered in pig blood? Carrie. Carrie. Oh, great book, I, too. And it was the original one. So I was like mm -hmm. a little kid. And I just happened to be walking by. And I saw her covered in the blood. And then I was like... <gasps> and I knew I wasn't supposed to be in there. So I just ran and got in the bed. For like three years, I had nightmares. And really, I had to like train myself how not to have nightmares like i couldn't watch anything but comedy right before i went to sleep like i had a routine i could only think happy thoughts before i went to bed so by the time i was 12 i had trained myself to only take in happy information which is probably how i am where i am now you know like a consummate bubble you know i'm always in my own head and I have to control what I put in there because it gets crazy in there. Like oh, yeah? the circle thinking is like, oh. you know, um, it's like, okay, I'm constantly trying to solve a problem. Like, damn, I saw some shit I didn't want to see. So how am I going to erase that from my memory before I go to bed? Well, I think I'm going to watch Reno 911 for about an hour. Or that's not, yeah, that's out, a good, you know? like, a, like a palate cleanser. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, sometimes, yeah, I can see you need a palate cleanser before you go to bed after seeing a really, like, hor horrible movie. But, like, I've I've gotten, you know, you know what really what makes me get need a palate cleanser those fucking uh low uh those uh ho murder porn series the uh, id you know like yeah yo that I, shit is disgusting I, I, like and <laughs> i don't know what it is it's with girls but uh there's a lot of girls out there that love watch crime tv they, they just love id particular murder <laughs> murder and i'm like okay either this bitch wants to learn how to get away with it or she uh wants to make sure that she knows all my tricks and she no, <laughs> can see me coming you know what i mean <laughs> my sister started watching snapped when she was like right before she got divorced and 
I would have been worried if I was her ex-husband because I'm like, if every time you come home, your wife is watching some shit about how a woman got away with killing her husband, that to me would be, baby, is there something we need to talk about? <laughs> you know, I see you like killing people. Can we talk about that? <laughs> how come it's always how this woman got away with killing her husband? I, I'm the husband. Is there something you want to tell? Like... I'm like, I got a lot of questions. Right. Do <laughs> men think about that? You come home, your wife is always watching crime drama. You never think maybe she's trying to kill you or like maybe she doesn't like something that's happening because when I'm happy, I don't want to watch a lot of gruesome shit. I'm like, let's Sailor Moon or some happy shit. <laughs> Sailor Moon's I mean, happy, yeah. But... I've never liked to watch that. In fact, I think the most gruesome thing I've ever watched was like Law and Order SVU, which uh, is like those are interesting. And then and horror, I just though. like the yeah. mystery. I love mysteries. Yeah, okay. But then when I was pregnant, both grandmothers were like, You can't watch that while you're pregnant. It affects the baby. Uh, so once they said some... that, I pretty much haven't watched SVU since. And I was watching it like all the time. All right. So did the baby come out like a borderline nope. serial killer? Did he exhibit any sociopathy? I mean, he's a Scorpio. But... That's it. That's it. <laughs> throw, mean, throw him out trash. Right. Both of the kids <laughs> are like probably a way more conservative than me. They're like, mom, uh, the things that you were saying, they don't really make sense in logic and thinking and thinking and logic and math and engineering. <sighs> you know, they're like way smarter than me on like a math science level. Yeah. And growing up with me, they learned how to navigate crazy women. <laughs> it's like, mom, I'm, I'm not trying to tell you how to cook dinner, but... Do you know when we're having dinner? You know, what is for dinner? Oh, that sounds good. You know. It's like passive aggressive shit. It's just trying to gauge yeah. the room because is she crazy today? Is she yeah. going to throw something at me? Or I know she burnt this food, but should I tell her I'm still hungry? Or should I just make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Make the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah, just... you better make that sandwich and leave me the hell alone. Yeah, kid. I'm that's... having a moment. It's always the answer. No, but <laughs> I got lucky with my kids. You know, some people don't even like their kids. I'm like, but they're your kids. I mean, they grew up with you. If you yeah, don't but like, like them. I mean, it's still become a person, and you know, some kids are assholes. I mean, some people are assholes. Some people are. I look at it like. But you're saying that's you raised an asshole. Yeah. Not you, not you. No, I'm just but saying. But the person, if if your kid, if uh, hypothetical, if someone's kid is an asshole, is I'm essentially not their blame fault the because they raised the asshole. I'm like, but didn't you know he was turning into an asshole? Did you talk to the child? <laughs> did you just put him in the room and say, have at it? Yeah. Because if you did, you can't really blame him for being right. an asshole because you spent no time with them. I harassed the shit out of my kids consistently until they were too old for me to do so. I'm like, hey, you want to go see a movie? Hey, you want to go out to eat? Hey, you want to do that? But then I give them their own space. They could be right. in their room for hours you know, playing games, doing whatever. But I think it's a combination of your personality and not lying to your kids. Because if you're fake with your kids, my kids know that I was a rave kid. My kids know that mom is not a perfect person. Mom is not even the same person every day, you know. Okay, wait, hold on. So, this, this is, you touched on an interesting topic that uh, the raves, you used to go to raves? I was a club kid, like full on wigs and drugs and high heels and drag queens and house music. That was my shit. You okay. know, I... Were you out here in Florida? South Florida? Oh, hell no. This was when I was still living in Atlanta. And oh, at, snap. Um, how's, that, how's the scene out in Atlanta? How'd that start? Well, when I graduated from high school, I was 16. So when I started college, I had just turned 17. So my parents weren't really letting me do a lot. I couldn't leave town. I had to stay at home. And I lived with my parents when I was in school. But um, it was weird because I, I wanted to do teenage stuff. But most of the people I went to school with were like in their 20s because mm -hmm. the average Georgia State student at that time was like 27. Right. And I had just turned 17. 
So I ended up working at the radio station and meeting like all these cool people who kind of changed my life and my perspective. I had never smoked or drank or hung out or did anything. I was like a real kid kid playing with Barbie dolls and shit. So oh man. Then just being taken under the wing of so many weirdos that were so cool to me and and let me be who I was cuz I was a weirdo but in like an oddly religious kind of way. Yeah. So just just having people be honest with me like Crystal, you can't just say that. I'm like, but if you're gay, why do you want a dildo? Like, literally, <laughs> this was me. I was it, like, you know, you have questions. You know, who? if you're not going to learn from the source, you know. But instead of being offended, yeah. I mean, I guess some people were offended, but they're like, <laughs> damn, this kid is dumb. Let me just, girl, first of all, you shouldn't say that to people. And two... Just because I might not want to have sex with a man doesn't mean I don't want to have penetration. I was like, but I'm still confused. Well, this is it. This is the but, this is the age old question between why, like, how is it okay? A, a lesbian, you know, she doesn't like men, right? But yet she likes women with a strap on. Like, no, we, I think it's the there's perception. men with that kind of have femme, femme looks with actual penises. Well, this is the thing. Why I don't think it's so much that lesbians don't like men. I think that at some point it's not a sexual thing anymore. Right. Like, um, um, and it's dimensional, right? If someone has never had a fulfilling relationship with the man like even though they keep trying and they keep being disappointed at some point they may just seek other options just mm -hmm. as a logical choice and then some people just know from birth that they never want to have sex with a man or a woman but the intricacies of what sex look like don't always just come in like a penetration or a non-penetration thing. You know, even as a young woman, I would say I never really enjoyed penetration, mm. you know, because the act of having sex with men when I was younger was so much for the man's pleasure. And it mm. was never really... And I think a lot of times when men are young, they don't ask questions or they don't really know what they're doing. They don't, but they also, just let you do they're not, they don't understand that like it's not about your own pleasure. You know, like, it like, should be like a mutual thing. Right. And and I think like maybe they think like, well, women, they are just there to fuck. You they, they don't care about like having an orgasm or well, patriarchy you know what I mean? used to tell women that we shouldn't have pleasure. We should not expect to have pleasurable sex. Mm -hmm. And there are still men who believe that there's no such thing as a female orgasm. And I was like, Well, maybe because most women don't have orgasms with men. Right. Because they just don't have that same empathy sexually mm -hmm. you know if someone in your life all they do is climb on you and hump you and then you feel like well i guess is that what it's supposed to feel like nah, exactly even if you really like that person there are women who live and die and have never had an orgasm which is sad right so whenever i see a woman who decides that she's going to take her sexuality in her own hands, I'm actually kind of proud of her because she found something that works. I can honestly tell you, I've never had an orgasm with a man ever in my life, wow. ever. And I have two kids. So it's... Well, that doesn't, you know, don't... Not really, I mean, really so I've definitely had sex with men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I won't say it wasn't pleasurable. It's just it wasn't an orgasm because right. I know what an orgasm feels like, and I know I never had one with a man. Before. I think it's also because sex education isn't designed to teach pleasure, but you know, function. abstinence and function, right? So it's right. like, so like, and, um. But, but when you watch porn, you imagine that these girls are having an orgasm because you know a lot of them are acting, this, right? They're but, all acting, obviously. But like, but there's there's no actual technical know how. You know, like I learned how to please women from books, 
and like all that sort of stuff. And like I actually took interest in it, you know, while I noticed that my peers <laughs> watching they, porn. They didn't give a f- yeah. They just watch porn like all right, just thump, you know, just, because they just beat that pussy up. Right. Right. Boom, 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 boom. They you think know <laughs> that porn is an instruction manual. Yeah, it is not. It's no. kind of like if you want to learn how to have the worst sex possible, watch porn. Right. Because one, wait, wait, wait. There's you, the, except the now there's a whole new genre of porn for females. And it's actually more geared towards female friendly. Yeah, female friendly, and like it, the guys are more sensual. It's like more sensuous porn, you know. It's like and it's actually, less. Yeah, yeah, and more maybe like almost yeah. like a sensuality. Yeah, that would be a better way to show people what sex is like because I, if you've ever seen that movie Don John, with no. um, what's his name, Gordon Joseph Love Love it. Joseph Gordon Lovett. He um Okay, the kid from the third Rock from the Sun Inception. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was in a movie with Scarlett Johansson where he's like this dude about town and he's banging all these chicks and he's like, you know, the cock king. Mm. But um then he meets this older woman who's like, uh, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck this is, but <laughs> This yeah. is, you cannot this watch is not porn it. <laughs> and think that's what sex is. Mm-hmm. And he actually had to learn that a lot of his sexual perspectives were based on, like, even the way he treated his girlfriend. Like, he was really that guy who felt like women were not necessarily they were sex was like a political thing for women right. it wasn't that they were enjoying the sex it was just that they were using it to either get married or to have you know some kind of conquest like if you could get this dude sexually then you know he's what it is but my mom told me a man will stick his dick in a wall <laughs> <laughs> so you having a vagina is nothing special. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody has one, just like assholes. You know, it's kind of <laughs> like what makes you so special? You want to find somebody who likes the entire person. Of course. Yeah. And if you're just looking for the hottest, slickest, fastest, best, the best girl, you know, I just want to walk around with this chick because she's the hottest and everybody wants her. No wonder you're having bad sex because you don't even know her. She's just wait. This is like a, your, from a male perspective or a female yeah, perspective. Yeah, like it's kind of like, and a guy said this to me. A lot of times, guys have sex with a lot of girls not because they find pleasure in it. It's just because they want to tell their friends that they had sex with this hot girl or they did this with this chick or whatever. So they're really not even having sex with women because of the woman. They're doing it so they can brag about what they did with that woman. That's part of it. It's also, I think, um, guys, if if you can do it, you know, if you have the ability to, because not all guys have the ability to just randomly have sex with a bunch of women. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, not everyone has that. Uh, so, but if you do have that, you still, it's it's about emotional attachment too. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oftentimes, what winds up happening is like, you know, they might be, they might believe in romance and all that sort of stuff. And they get the heartbroken because girls also, yeah, you know, they, girls, they, girls can be too. players too. You know what I mean? Right. So, and I think it becomes this like, like the, this hurt people, hurt people kind of situation mm-hmm. where on one hand, both parties don't want to have that emotion attachment because even though love feels great, heartbreak doesn't. Right. You know Emotions what I mean? Emotions can be. Yeah. So.
So and and so, the, but the social stigma is that it's okay for guys to go around, you know what I mean? But mm. not for girls. So girls just become undercover hoes, you know. Well, girls, but with guys, it's okay to flaunt, you know, and peacock your your um, you know. But sex women life. peacock too, you know, because I remember in high school, I knew this girl who said she wouldn't date a guy. If he didn't have pretty hair and if he was dark skinned, these were her words, mm-hmm. because she did not want to get pregnant and have a dark skinned baby with nappy hair. I'm like, bitch, what? That's, that's everything you are. <laughs> you don't even like your own. Oh, Sherday Candace Owens? Probably, but she was dead ass serious. I was Damn. like, you put thought into what you're future baby daddy is going to look like like really i never considered that i never looked at somebody and said man your genetics are fucked up i don't want to have a baby with you because most of the time you don't really plan to have a baby so you're thinking well maybe not. i, I, I think know. some women i think some women do actually have like these like you know the little fairy tales like you know in, in their minds, like, if I'm going to have a baby, this is my little baby's going to look like. I think that's, like, a big thing. You know, I think there's a, that's a thing uh, with some women. I think it's a thing with a lot of women because anytime I hear a blonde-haired, blue-eyed woman say, I just want a little mochaccino, baby. I'm like, bitch, it's not a drink. <laughs> or little biracial babies are the cutest. I'm like, bitch, you're not biracial. Are you saying you are an ugly baby? Do you not well, I I I is? think I promote uh, more race mixing. I think once we're all just one gray color, we're all one gray <laughs> color now. It's just that people are so fucking stupid. Yeah, you know, everybody in my family is a different color. You know, we might all be similar races. Right. Maybe if you look at all of us, it's like spans from the 
islands of the Pacific all the way to the hills of Ghana and up in the Caucasus Mountains. Fuck, if we mm. were really trying to decide which genes made it here first, I'm like, well, I'm looking at myself and I can see everything that my parents are. Mm -hmm. You know, even if we might have different complexions or different experiences based on our complexions, because you do, you know, my my family who looks one way probably walks a different walk. You know, they might have different experiences. I know my sister-in-law in Hawaii, her family is Filipino and the Damn. stereotypes people have about Asian women are fucked up because if you go and you think all Asian women are submissive and shy, you have never met a Filipino woman, like ever. That's not true. I've met several. Wait, and, uh, now, a Filipino <laughs> Filipino or Fi American Filipino? Filipino from the Philippines. Oh, okay. You yeah, know yeah. what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I'm like, Roxy's mom is from the Philippines. She moved to Hawaii with her brothers and sisters. I think her and her sisters were in that nurses thing where they were getting all these nurses from the Philippines and they were coming to the U.S. Mm -hmm. to work as nurses. And because they're all nurses. And um, she is... Uh, Mama Nita don't play that shit. Like, uh-uh. She is nowhere near a submissive woman. And neither is Roxy. And my mom, being a Southern Black woman, she's not a submissive woman either. She's not aggressive. You know, she's very sweet. But if she had to, she would beat somebody's ass in a right. church hat with no problem to protect well, her Well, submissive, and, I mean, there's diff you you know, know? different levels and different... Uh, but they grew up doing uh, the time when people submissive. were getting lynched. Like, man yeah. or woman, at any point, you might have to defend yourself with a gun, a piece of wood, or whatever. Because literally, what happened to Ahmad Arbery happened down where my parents are from. Like, the a lot of the white people down there have no problems with killing black people. Like, literally. And it happens more than you would think. That happened, Armand, th th that happened in Georgia too, right? That happened down where my parents are from yeah. in Scriven County. Mm -hmm. And... I remember growing up and the old people would talk about how they used to have to bury shotguns in the yard just in case the people were coming around lynching people. You couldn't be down there without a gun. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. they literally hated that all the black people down there owned land and property and were taking care of business. So, of course, a lot of the racist white people would literally be pissed off because they didn't have land or property. And you see all these, quote unquote, niggers with property and money, and they would just go out and target people. And if you come around here to the Lewis compound, you can get your ass served to you with some hot ass Winchester lead. Damn. And that's how you have to think, like. You know, men or women. My mom knows how to shoot a shotgun. We know how to shoot shotguns because zombie apocalypse or Nazi <laughs> apocalypse is not going to be an easy fight. Yeah. You know, so, you know, you see people and they're like, hey, girl. And then, like, you hear about how they beat somebody damn near to death with the butt of a shotgun right. for spitting on their mother. Well, I mean, you yeah. Know, like, well, that's, that, I think that's like, um, you know, you know, okay, but <laughs> that's the irony of going up. You Spit know, my people. mom, you're definitely gonna get fucking uh, uh shotgun butts. Oh, don't your head. worry about that, my mom got it. Yeah, yeah, that. Nuh -uh. I'll be back. Nuh uh, that and ain't uh, happening. No, but it, it's like, <laughs> nope, you can't be a shrinking violet, and that's the other thing about being a woman. If you if you are too confident, or if you feel like you can deal with life on your own sometimes people aren't attracted to that they can't handle it they need someone who's gonna be their support mate or they're like someone who's going to be fulfilled just living for them yeah and i guess a lot of women do that they give up on everything they want it to be to kind of be this helpmate to someone else whether that person is good to them or not. Like a lot of women, old school women would never get a divorce 
even if their husbands cheated on them, beat them, you know, hurt them in terrible ways. They just felt like they had to stay. Well, now a lot of women are like, I'm not sticking around for this shit. I have my own job, my own money. Hell, this is my house. You got to get the fuck out. <laughs> you know, and a lot of men don't want to be in a position where they have an equal partner because that person could take you or leave you. They could be there or not. And if you're not a good person, they're going to choose not to be there. So when you see people like Kevin Samuels and these other, like, you need to be a submissive woman or you need to be this kind of woman to be valuable or this, that, and the other, I'm like, I don't know why you say shit like that to women like me because I don't give a damn. If I'm going to be lonely, if that's what you say. Like well, I think that's the, the who, who he's trying to uh, talk to, right? Like, women that don't want to be lonely right you know that and they're and, but also you know some women have it a have a you know unrealistic expectation of the type of man that they think they're gonna get you know if, they, if you're gonna get if they think you're gonna get like this rich man that's making fucking you know half a million dollars a year and you're gonna be not uh up to par submissive not try to take care of him you know, or if you think you're gonna marry Beyonce and you work for the city, same thing. It's not gonna exactly work same. Out, and you know? to be fair, <laughs> and to be fair, Kevin Samuels also talks to those guys in the same fashion well, he's too. Dead yeah. now. I know. Somebody probably killed his ass on purpose. You think so? Probably. It's you always... can't talk shit to every woman. Now, some of these women... <laughs> he did die with a woman. Ass. He uh, died right after fucking a girl. Uh, a his... young girl who was Puerto Rican, because, you know, he can deal with black women. <laughs> what? And she probably <laughs> killed his ass. I uh, just feel like... So what? You know what? The Puerto Rican woman got no, assassin's I'm just saying, creed? No, he... Was talking so much shit about black women. I'm not surprised the woman who he was with wasn't a black woman because she wasn't. Hmm. He wasn't messing with black women. But he would tell black women that, you know, we don't have class or we expect too much or, you know, he would literally berate some of these women who really were looking for advice. I'm like, well, I don't know why you would go to him looking for advice. First of all, to me, he seems very queer eyed for the straight guy. He did have that. So, yeah. And I can't stand a man who primps and preens and puts all that oily shit on his. I can't stand a pretty dude. Like, really, if you're in the mirror more than me and I'm barely in there, we're not going to make it. Because I'm going to look at you looking at yourself and go, damn, I'm so sick of him looking at himself. <laughs> and but, I know that's right. bad, but right. you know. But to be fair, like <laughs> the, the the women that are that would you know whatever they they think they are that too, right? They 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 want they want to get all prim and proper, and they they're following the same. So mode. instead of listening to a person you know. telling you how shitty you are, how about listen to a person who's going to help you feel good about yourself? Because it's not always about how you look because or your body shape or any of that. Mm. Because I wish I had a third of Lizzo's confidence. Like, really. I, I feel like for her to be constantly berated because of her size and still come out and feel and teach other women how to be sexy and mm. embrace yourself no matter what your body size no matter what other people tell you and there's a big demographic for that like it's yo that's like, what i that was my biggest point like you know how many dudes i know that love fat girls like yo so many you know what i mean so it's like when i was it's fat. like Fuck you know it's y'all. like it's, it's, it's almost <laughs> like yo you but fat guys get it's hard for them you know but you know fat guys you have to be fucking hilarious to get you know what i mean a super well, talented pull girls but uh i mean there's still guys that are actually physically attracted and you know to like big girls and that's that's fine so uh all this shit talking like from what's his name uh Ari spears or whatever that shit was i mean i thought it was hilarious but i also thought the clap back like the internet does not play if you're gonna fucking what if did you're gonna, Ari spears um, say um, is he, he irrelevant 
Oh, okay. So you didn't finish watching my 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 <laughs> video. Me. Well, you'll get you'll get to it uh, towards the end. But I, I showed a clip where um, so Eric Spears guys gets into this uh, interview and he's asked about Lizzo and the guy interviewer was actually saying, "Yo, giving her props. Like, you know who's really talented? Blah blah blah. Lizzo. She, I love her music. Right. And um, Aries goes, Lizzo. Uh, oh, I just can't get over the fact that she looks like a shit emoji. And I was what? like. Yeah. Now, at first, I'm gonna lie. That sh- that image in my head like made me laugh. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like he kept going out like, "Oh, she's a beautiful girl." Blah 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 blah. Uh, but don't show off your body. I'm like, all right, well, shut like, up. Who, you like, who cares? Pig but beast. but the internet clapped back because they went and they dug out this video of him and uh, this other comedian chick, real popular too. And they made this skit, which was so crazy, so cringe, where like uh, they pretty much had a little boy. And the premise was that this the mom's leaving uh, the boy with his creep, uh, the creepy uncle. Uh-huh. And the, and Aries, Aries Spears is the creepy uncle. Uh-huh. And like he's like not like he's rubbing fucking oil on the little boy and taking a bath oh. and like just being super pedo. You know, but like, and that's a joke, I guess. But it just not this does not go oh well. Oh. Like when you watch the shit, you're not thinking, "Ah, oh, this is funny." You're thinking like, "Yo, this is creepy this as is fuck. Disgusting. This is gross. Like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Like, where's the humor? Where's the laugh? You know? You say like, that about him so, a lot. Though. There's so many like I've seen so many like you know who does it well? Fucking chess uh, like uh, Family Guy that like the creepy fucking. Oh. Oh, the old creepy yeah, dude the old that's creepy. always looking in the Yeah, window. you know what I mean? Like, there's ways to make that type of humor and it's still funny, but like, his shit was fucking miss. Nice. You know? So, in the video that I made, like, I juxtaposed, uh, you know, him talking that shit and then uh, Lizzo giving her, like, a speech where she's right. like, fuck all you haters, you know? Right. And like, and right next to it was a clip of it, of like, of him in the, the bit yeah. now the like where i grabbed the youtube video off they censored the, the part so just thank you because i didn't want to actually show that part but they censored like the the little boy mm-hmm. but you could tell that what the skit is you know right. you're like yo there's not it's so creepy so he took an l for that one you know right. so like so Plus, yeah I mean, why do you have to berate someone just because <clears throat> There's a market mm. for everything. You right. don't like fat girls? Don't like fat. But you know what? When I fucking heard Lizzo, like, I was like, yo, I love this. She's an amazing right. artist. That's all I care about. Right. Is your music banging? You know? And the <coughs> fact that she's super talented. She's super talented. She plays and, a flute. I mean, huh? She plays a flute. That's what I'm saying. That was the one of the first things to me that kind of set her apart. From all the other fluff girl artists. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of these girls, like, um, for years, all I heard was breathing over a fucked up track. Like, ah, I didn't love, ah, I'm your girl. Ah. I'm like, bitch, shut up. Are you singing or dying? Like, where is a song? Like, do people sing anymore? Is Aretha yeah. Franklin spinning in her grave? Like, that's, that's what they call singing? I made this point the other day, too. It's like, I feel like r and B. The genre R and B just like shit. actually, you know what I what happens R and B? I think EDM picked it up. I think a lot of okay. these like like the EDM vocalists better than the, 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 a lot of the vocalists just went you know to that side because hip hop kind of turned their back on on R and B a little on bit, singing. except for like Drake and Tory Lanez. Those are the only two uh, dudes that kind. Of, what is what's Chris Brown doing? He hasn't he hasn't done shit hip-hop in a hot minute. Has been way too misogynistic for about. 25 or more years because the I only think, time all music has a little bit the only time women can get popular in hip hop is if they act like whores and I think that and I mean the word whore because it's a word that men use to describe sexualized women and these women become whores for music so they can get famous like literally mm. like these women are talented why do you have to show everybody the inside of your vagina 
to get a record deal <laughs> when you are literally talented. Like, I don't see Chris Brown showing us his dick or bending over and showing his ass or talking about how he got a wet ass dick. You know what I'm saying? I I'm just sure, feel I'm like sure he talks about it. That, I'm sure he's had some lyric where he's talking about his hard ass dick. Well, <laughs> he, I'm pretty sure he has one. But at the same time, being a woman, from the time little Kim hit the scene, because before that, I was into hip hop, like mm -hmm. literally MC Light. I bought like her first two to three albums. And even any female rapper who was saying something relevant to me, whether it was political or talking about women's issues or any issue, anything. And then all of a sudden, all the female rappers were turned into ex-strippers or they're going and finding these girls at strip clubs. How do I know? Because when I was working at the radio station, a lot of a lot of the promoters were mm. targeting strip clubs and they were looking for people for who rapper. looked a certain way, whether they could rap or not. They just wanted big booty hoes making records and dancing on records and doing all that. And I was like, but I'm not into whole music and well, okay. I'm not really into this whole degradation of the female form. And I'm way too political for okay. rap music have, right Do you know, now. have you heard, <laughs> I'll give you, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to put you on to a, a couple females that you might be down for. You snow the product. Uh, no, I have remember you heard of Jean Grey, which was how far back I was Hold listening on. to, let, to let, let, I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to put on snow the product real quick. She's just, Badass. I mean, but she had the name. Oh, you know, stop. It's kind of like, why I can't mean, she just you know, be the, don't judge his name. I mean, it's, you know, sometimes you gotta like, she's Mexican. But, uh, but can you tell? Because they all look alike these oh, days. Oh, stop and it. All the women stop look the it. same. They could be any race, they could be black, uh -huh. Spanish, Asian. <laughs> It's the same woman in every color. No, she but she's got bars. She she's talented. See, she could be Megan the Stallion. She could be anybody. No, nah, I All mean, of this sounds the same to me. But I, nah, she's not. She, she Megan the Stallion has more sexualized lyrics than she does. She's just party vibe. I mean, I mean but she's, she's already. I mean, you know, hip hop has got like that swag too, times. right? Hip hop, you gotta, you gotta have that little bravado. You know, she still got that. See, this is what hip hop is now. I'm talking about now pause this and put on MC Light Poor Georgie. Totally different. Like, this is what women are rapping about now because, because it didn't have to be that. They even tried to sexualize MC Light for a while. You know, okay, because what is, which one? Like, okay, see see the first video, how she is, and then the one under that is. Which what don't they you see right here? She's looking kind of like a dude. A little bit? No. That's just how chicks used to dress back then. What is she supposed to be doing? Wearing a dress in Harlem? This is a little masculine. Not that like she, That's but like her the style. You're... The style. Not like, you know. How is she her... masculine with the earrings? Style, and she's lipstick. got fucking baggy jeans. She got the freaking hat to the to the side. Not it's, just it's this her. I love MC Light. In the Bronx. But... Is she supposed to be wearing a sundress? <laughs> like literally I'm looking at her like as a kid this is how we dress when you don't want to look like a hoe women mm. wear baggy clothes when they don't want men looking at their bodies cause I wasn't trying to dress like a boy but I didn't want boys looking at my titties and my ass all the time so I wore baggy clothes some women wear baggy clothes cause they don't want to be sexualized mm. and in male gazes if you're not trying to be sexualized, you must be a dyke. Because mm. what straight woman doesn't want a motherfucker all up in her guts all the time? That's what that's you know, that's so what happened. Um, what's that? What's that? Uh, 
rapper from the West Coast uh, that um, Afro Puffs. I got oh, rough and stuff with my Afro Puffs. The Lady Puffs. of Rage. The Lady of Rage. Yeah. So a lot of people thought she was a lesbian. Because you know she I mean? didn't. Because she had like that, ma like that little bit of masculine vibe. But like, you know, she's a rapper. And this is the rapper, same video. You know? And does she look less masculine now because she has a, a relaxer and her hair is straight? You nah, know? Nah. I'm not trying to, I, like, it's just a general, you know, and I get your point, like, what was she wearing? Supposed to be wearing a dress, whatever. But to be fair, we're contrasting the strippers, the stripper vibe that you originally brought up With versus the other flip side when that when then I brought up Snow when the you're product. not sexualized, yeah. you look like and then you, you compare this to MC Light. And I in my my point of view, I I don't see much of, like I think Snow the product is almost the same as her. this is a modern day. This uh, obviously Things gonna be a little but bit different. MC the style gonna be a little isn't different. Saying bitch over and over. She's not calling herself a bitch, and she's not yeah, calling you know. other women. See, okay, now you're language, getting super conservative. Yes, because yeah. language affects the way people feel about themselves. So you have mm. a whole generation of women now who call themselves bitches, who embrace the term bitch, and it is a degrading term. Mm. I would never, ever, ever ever be with somebody who called me bitch it is disrespectful like if i'm with a dude and he's like that's my bitch i'm like your mama's a bitch bitch i am not a fucking bitch yeah i am a human woman i do not walk on all fours fuck you and your bitch ass mama if she lets you go around <laughs> calling women bitches that's her bitch ass fault mm -hmm. i would be embarrassed if my sons were going around saying shit like that to women I made it very clear that we do not have that shit in my house. If you cannot respect women, then you don't need to deal with them. Point blank. Because as a woman, I feel like it's my responsibility to make sure my sons know how to fucking act when they go out amongst people. Mm -hmm. And if you are a man and you consistently call women bitches and you date women who call themselves bitches, then you are a bitch ass nigga. Damn, I Period. guess I'm a bitch ass nigga. <laughs> so you like being a dog. I am not a dog. Right. I'm a fucking astro monkey. Okay, I'm not even of this earth. I can't even deal with most of the people here because I know I know what words do to people. I right. know the emotion behind words has a very real feeling and, and it affects you. And there's actually a study by Professor Aboto and he studies water and the effects of how the words you say to water yeah. affect yeah, I believe that because I don't know. I want to. I want. I would want to test that because I. You I've, should. Test I've actually it. like read other studies that kind of debunk that. Uh, I that don't care what they say. Theory. I know that shit is real because if your body is seventy to eighty percent water and you keep telling it how fucked up it is, it will degrade. You know the things. There's that definitely you put, something to your, the mindset of yeah. Personally, I know as an esoteric being that whatever emotions I pull in, I'm going to give out. Mm -hmm. So if I'm constantly bombarded with shit that makes me feel bad or things that tell me I'm bad or things that tell me I'm a bitch or I'm a whore or I, I, I need to be this way or that way, I can't take that shit in because I know it will affect me. Mm. You know, and I refuse to take in things that don't serve me because when I was younger, I used to let people tell me a whole bunch of shit about myself and I would take it in like, well, maybe I am this way. Well, maybe I am that way. But then when I realized, nah, fuck them. Nobody can tell you who you are. Mm -hmm. You know you better than anybody else. And if they don't get it, fuck them. You know, if nobody ever wants to be with me in a relationship, no matter what it is, I got to let that shit go because, right. you know, every relationship you find yourself in other than family is a choice. And sometimes family is a choice. You know, mm. if you're in a relationship and you're not fulfilled in that relationship, you should leave. Really, you should, mm -hmm. because you're not serving yourself for, by just sitting there suffering. 
And if somebody doesn't want to be with me and it, and and being with me makes them suffer, I want them to leave because I want them to be happy. If you love somebody, you want them to be happy even if they can't be happy with you. And that's what most people don't get. Like if you really say you care about somebody and you love them, but they can't be happy with you, you have to let it go. Right. Well, what if you're happy uh, with it, someone, even though you just casually use the word bitch or whatever, like it's just casual vernacular. Then that's you. I can't judge how you deal yeah. with another person. Like that's me. Mm. I totally, Jay, I wouldn't think you were a bad person because you and your girlfriend call each other bitch. I figured that's dope. <laughs> That was they shit. You know, I, maybe they like bitching each other out. But for me, I right. would be like... I, when I say it, I usually say it ironically. You know what I mean? I try. It's it's usually in like in a form of a... You know I'm fucking joking around. I'm, I, you know? It's just me fucking Or sometimes, shit, you know? like when, you, when I, I hang out with... Or like, if I'm really mad, maybe... If I'm mad like, and you do something... You know, if, you, if you do something that constitutes... You, yeah, you're kind of being a bitch right now. You're you know kind what of I mean? being, and and that's fine because sometimes I can be a bitch, but that doesn't make me a bitch. Right. That means sometimes that, in that moment, hey, you're kind of being a bitch. <laughs> doesn't kinda, mean you're a bitch, but you you're kind of acting like one. I'm feeling some <laughs> bitchiness coming from you. Yeah. And like you gotta, you're giving out these bitch vibes right now. I can't say I've never called somebody a bitch, but if I if I am angry, anything might come you out. You pop off that freaking Queen Latifah song. You and I, T Y, don't you call me a bitch? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not a perfect person. Have right. I called people a bitch before? Yes, oh, I've, I might call I've somebody a bitch worse. tomorrow. I've, yeah. But if I'm in a relationship with someone and we share that space, I have enough respect for them to not think of them mm -hmm. as like, because to me, bitch is a strong word. If I say, fuck you, bitch, I oh, mean, man. I can't stand See, you I, never see my, my windows are, are shift even more. <laughs> bitch is like the low, the low, the, the least I could give you. You know what I mean? Like, I sometimes go for right to the good juggler. I like the C word. I'm not going to say it right now. Well, I respect. I, have I made a whole video. Somebody. I've made a whole video. Like, why can't I say cunt on Facebook? You it's know? just gross. <laughs> like, I don't feel comfortable saying pussy. It is oh. uncomfortable for me. You and... were, I don't know, you're, you you have like this, I don't want to, I don't know if the right word is like repressed or sheltered or like, like. Childlike. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Childlike is good. Because, you know? Yeah. You know, that's kind of how I am. I'm like, I think, well, maybe that's how I got my nickname, Star Child, because when I was working at the radio station, I was younger than everybody else, but I really feel like like a Peter Pan kind yeah. of child, like all the time. Everything's new to me, and I'm like fascinated by everything, and I'm pretty naive about a lot of shit. And I make a lot of strong claims like kids do, and then I might not be able to live up to them. So I'm very aware of myself as being almost childlike, mm -hmm. you know, because I have a lot of strong emotions about a lot of shit that might not be solid shit. Like, I like strawberry cheesecake, <laughs> but not all strawberry cheesecake, specifically the only kind that you could get at Junior's. The rest of it is bullshit, <laughs> you know, or like, man, one day I want to grow up and have a unicorn puppy. They might have those by the time. I'm unicorn leaving. puppy? What? You know, just First of all, old... I don't think unicorns would have puppies, right? What's the, what's the term for like a... Uh... A baby horse, a if pony, you, unicorn you, pony. You don't know if they have unicorn puppies because it's a made up animal. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's kid logic. Like, you don't know. You don't know nothing. They might have wings too. Yeah, and another universe. You know? I, I just do believe in alternate universes. I believe in multiverses. Yeah. I believe too. that there, if we truly believe in science and that you know, energy can never be created or destroyed, then everything here is a constant cosmic thing. So you have to respect it and understand that we'll never know everything about everything. And even my parents have been married, what, 52 years? Mm -hmm. And they're still learning and growing in their relationship. 
and with each other. And I'm just like constantly amazed by it because at some I was, point you're like, man, I ain't going nowhere. We're stuck together now. Now, but when they were younger, <laughs> yeah, I remember that shit. Like my mom would openly threaten my dad's life at the dinner table. <laughs> you know what, Charlie? I could just, I could really just kill you. You know, I cook all the food in here. You can't cook a thing. <laughs> and look, you're eating right now. I mean, we're all eating like. <laughs> Cyanide. Please don't wait for the one person to start fucking puking up. Freaking. Gretchen, quit playing. <laughs> I'm not playing. And we're all just. And it's like my parents have the same birthday. Mm. And they're four years apart. And I was like, how are these the same people? Like, how do you have the same birthday and be totally different people? But now, they are the same person. I guess when you stay married that long, you just kind of... Yeah, after a while, you're like, I oh, forget it. This is it. We're stuck. We're going to do meet someone new at bingo. But distinctly <laughs> different. And my dad doesn't go to... He, my dad is the kind of guy who goes to work and comes home every single day. Mm. He goes to church. He comes home. Like, you could never miss my dad. You know where he is going to be every oh. single day. And so I'm used to that consistently. My dad works six days a week. He doesn't work on Sunday. He does genealogy at his temple. Like, he's a pretty quiet, solid guy. And when he kind of looks like a black Mr. Spock, too. Really? So when I was growing up, I always thought, like, my dad's, Little knee boy. I mean, he's like all into his, and he does the Vulcan thing, and he's really into like sci-fi. I grew up watching Star Trek, Star Wars. He took us to the movies That's... when I was a kid to go see Empire Strikes Back and all of that. So, I guess my mom got lucky that my dad's really kind of like a stay-at-home introvert kind of guy. He really doesn't have like a lot of friends hanging around and extraneous people. And my mom's really outgoing and like, you know, she has a lot of friends and a lot of things going on. She's the athlete. She used to play basketball. My dad's like straight up not that guy. And I bought Francis's baby Yoda for my dad for Father's Day, right? And he put it right over the bed. And my mom is not a sci-fi person. No. And she was like, why'd you send that to your daddy? (laughs) <laughs> do you see where he put it I have to look at it every day I'm like I didn't know he was going to put it in the bedroom Bob, but it's still there that's funny and now he'll watch but usually, usually the woman is the one that decides what goes around the walls and the, the core of the, of the oh house yeah right but she does he just wanted that one po- He loved So you gotta that you gotta baby. give you gotta give it up. Yep. And you gotta give him that one thing. You know, that's compromise. Hey, you got like 95% of the house, okay? The rest of the all house. this all these walls was all you. Okay. I just want this one. I just want this one, <laughs> one corner, Gretchen. God damn it. <laughs> and some cake. Can you make me a toasted coconut cake? Some please? cake, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, they're so cute now. They're yeah. like, yeah, daddy. Wanted me to cook. I'm like, oh my god, you're disgusting. Okay, do you want to show off any uh, other art of these videos? Um, sure. Maybe we could do. Um, well, I can't. I can't. Oh, I just started. I got off track. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay to go on some tangents. We're gonna like, uh, where's my mouse? Oh shit! I guess I do have to go home and at some point. Yeah, we're gonna like. Mom, we'll just yeah. try to wrap this up a little bit. So, we have a lot of good. Oh, it's our stuff. mama moves. Uh, here, can you do it? Because I'm blind. <laughs> and uh, I wish that the video. I wish. Oh, this is when I tried. All right, to stop. Let me not give me the. Oh. Power. This is another <laughs> promo I tried to make, and I put. Wait. Oh, I think oh. you're in this one. This I'm in this one. Okay, oh, then yeah. it's, a, it's That's the most. Nikki's. It's the most important video to watch. Yeah. It's just talking about how long we've been doing 100 Mondays. You can tell I didn't know how to do the sound because the original sound is still in there. It's cool. It gives a little bit. So this online art show. I like the concept. 
Yeah, I mean, during quarantine. Is yeah. this your is this your channel? Yeah, that's it. Oh, well, that's Art good. Revolution. Okay, so what other videos? So are? if you the one on the beach, that's the other one with the girl, the doll at the beach at the top. It's like the at, go above that. This one, one next to that one. This one. Yeah. Um, I've been working on the girl project for like seven or eight years, and it's the same doll that I painted over the years. And there was music to this, but it wouldn't transfer. So that um, the doll that's painted white, she's been painted a bunch of different times over the years. And I would travel with her and put her in different poses and stuff. And mm -hmm. this is just the latest one. And um, so she's like an elf on a shelf, but like kind of. But, but when I first started shooting her, she was called the girl in the box. Okay. And yeah. I was trying to um, show how women are trapped in these boxes and mm. how we come out of them. But I only did a couple of pictures like that because it felt like after she came out of the box, what happens now? And she became all these different people. Right. And I actually painted those wings out of my old uh, martial arts uniform. So the if you pull that out, it's like a set of wings. Um, oh, really? Yeah, but right now she's just kind of using it. Right because... now, she, yeah, right now she's using it to uh, cover herself. Yeah. So, that, so okay, so that oh, what's going on here? And the other, the she's black... got a passport. <laughs> mm -hmm. The black doll is her guardian. So. What happened was when Nikki passed, I was trying to figure out how to, um, basically how to deal. Mm -hmm. So one morning I just went out to the beach with my camera and that pink cage down at the bottom. Amanda gave it to me and I painted it with this hot pink uh, spray paint. Mm -hmm. And I use it as like a backdrop sometimes. So. We went to the beach and I took a bunch of pictures and then I sometimes would edit them. But that was just the raw footage of us at the beach. But um, I'll send you some more pictures from that project because a lot of them are really different. What's going on here? That looks like some artist. But it's a commercial. I don't know. The, I, I, I don't get commercials. I I pay YouTube premium, oh, that's not buddy. A commercial. <laughs> well, all right, that's the next one. Uh, you know. So I'll send you some still shots. Oh, um, so they're kind of in order. So if you go through it, there's some older ones. Well, which one should I? Oh, should... that's another one of mine right My there. So yeah. I'm over it? Okay. That's the girl again. I painted her maybe like four years ago. I did this whole setup for Kurt Vonnegut's Jailbird. Remember when Thaddeus did that show at Inkowit and it was, um, actually I did the show, it was a sci-fi show? Yes. Well, this was one of the things I did for the sci-fi show. And the painting in the back is like, um, like a cloud nebula. It's not. You need to learn to shoot landscape. This is the way Canva did it. Like, this is the oh, way Canva oh, did okay, all the Canva. videos. Like, that's why I had to do, like, the three panels, because it yeah. did all of them like that. And I was like, what? So, I like it, though. I, just, I think it's a cool little concept. Oh, thank you. She used to have hair, too. It's like, um, yeah, I think, like, the idea of, like, this doll and having different you know, putting in different situations it's could like, uh, create different stories. Right, you know? yeah. She's a girl, you know, out in the world doing shit, being weird, you know. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What are you saying? I was saying the one in the middle. No, no. the In the video, you're talking in the video. Yeah. It was... People were asking me if I was painting her white as a protest against all the blackface that was out. And I was like, hell no. People are looking real My deep into art the... is not subject to someone's whims. It, you know, and well, art is saying, subject to inter interpretation. But not because I want to protest blackface. I wouldn't. And that is so simple to me. I'm going to paint right. my doll white because I don't like blackface. 
Somebody asked me one time if when I painted her this blue robotic color and it looked black from afar. Oh, so you painted a white doll black. I was like, nah, bitch, she's blue. First of all, second of all, I don't have to do shit like that. It's been done. Mm -hmm. Okay. So some of these paintings are gone and I miss them. But oh well, at least you sold them. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That one with the the doll facing herself mm -hmm. is at Ginger's. Um, I gave it to Zoe for her birthday a couple of years ago. I wish I had kept it because it's one of my favorites. But anyway. <laughs> but it's literally that same doll when she had hair. I painted her like this lava color. And so well, she's like... Um, that's how you and I kind of met. We were we made the, the, the installation piece yeah. for the green room way back yeah. in the day. I wonder what happened. I don't know what happened to that freaking thing. Vivian Everybody. moved to LA a couple of years ago. Oh, she did? Yeah. And then Quintina. Oh, please uh, don't ever say that name. That bitch is psychotic. <laughs> like, literally. And, she's and Ian Santos is cool. Right. Oh, I love Although Ian. Although he, he unfriended me. I think, I think I, I'm too wild for him on fa Facebook. I haven't seen him in years, though. He's, he's on, he's on Twitter. Oh, okay. That's where I, I, I see him posting on Twitter more. I'm I'm, a, I'm, on a, I'm more on Twitter now. Fucking Facebook's been like... <sighs> Twitter weird. is too many rules. Like, I can never remember my account, but it's not under my name. It's under my old... Um, I don't know. Film. I think Facebook is too many rules. I, I've, I'm only I've gotten, on Facebook. I've been spanned so shit. many times, you know? They when they try to tell me I'm doing I'm breaking some rules I'm like how bitch I'm really not on here I'm just sending stuff from Instagram right. and checking like family stuff on Facebook that's where all my family pictures are like literally and um, that like painting in the middle yeah my niece was like why does this lady look like a man I was like that's what you got from this. Up to her, oh, what the hell's going on there? That's the that's the girl. She's, she's painted. So you paint. do okay. So uh, yeah, you paint her differently every time. I get it. Oh, she's been painted several times, and there's layers of paint on. She's her like body a now. she's like a body paint model. Yeah. And at first, like some while ago, I thought, well, maybe I should go bigger scale and get like mannequins. You and, should and know. You should, what you should do is paint women. Do actual body paint. And like how what's her name? Uh rest in peace, Keegan. Uh the she was a body. She pig. passed away? Yeah, unfortunately. For real? Yeah. Just like about I wanna say uh, six, seven months ago. I, I don't know. I remember he, seeing it on Facebook. I'm like, oh man, she was cool as hell. Yeah. Wow. She's like one, she's like the first time I actually saw body painters, or whatever, I'm like, it was her. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I wanna do that. Wow. And then, but you know, I'm, but then I have a friend named Chaos in Miami, and he's a really good body painter. I did a couple of shows with him, and I've done a couple of body paints. But you know, there's it's definitely a whole other art form to get into it. You know, and it's a lot of responsibility. Like Nikki was a tattoo artist, and when you work on someone's body, you know you have to take in the consideration their viewpoint too and their expectations. <laughs> Like with body paint, I found it to be a little bit different. Honestly, mm -hmm. like uh, I'm most they, if they give you some an idea up front, like, but most of the ones that I I work with, they are like do whatever, you know what I'm wow, saying? Wow, really? And and I'll, I might give them like an idea. Uh, for example, I did this one with um, this girl Mimosa, and I'm like, okay, this we're gonna do like a a, a mermaid kind of situation. We're gonna go for Lauderdale, and I painted this octopus with the and the tentacles like all around nice. her. You know what I mean? So that was the idea. So that's one, and then another one uh, huh. we shot was for Blacklight, and I just and that was was another girl that she brought over, and we did something. I forgot what it was, but ultimately it was up to me. Right. You know what I mean? Because I find that most models they they don't have a much of a vision per right. se. You know what I mean? They, they leave it up to the photographer. Now, they, they do have a vision, and then it becomes a more collaborative effort, mm -hmm. which is cool. But most of the time, they they want to be directed. You oh, know? okay. I get it. That's part of modeling, I guess. Yeah. You 
are kind of like a blank slate and then the yeah. designer creates something on you yeah. which i'm fascinated by like i used to when i was a kid i wanted to be a fashion designer but i have no patience for actually sewing mm -hmm. so i used to sew like clothes for my barbie and then the one year for the church like youth show instead of singing or something i literally did like a whole line of like fashions i even made like the little pillbox hats and little jackets and stuff very conservative i was like hey jackie <laughs> o's designer and i was like 10 but i had a thing for like pillbox hats because they were mm -hmm. so easy to make you just really literally cut it out take some cardboard bam stick it on the doll's head i was like i made a hat but then <laughs> You know, just going through life and I was a chunky kid and people were like, oh, you can't have a fashion career because you're fat. Your sister could because she's skinny. And I was like, but that's not even her thing. You know, yeah. people are so unfair. If I had had Lizzo as a role model when I was a kid, I would have been the happiest, chunky ass fashion designer on yeah, the planet. Yeah, we probably would have done, <laughs> done much of the modeling, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, look, there's there, there, like... It becomes like a niche, like the plus size models, mm -hmm. and they're they're needed, you know, like you know. So they're that's making fine. bank. They make now. a lot of money now. Yeah, definitely, yeah. it's a thing now, which is cool. Um, it's not that it's an issue. Usually, the the, the disagreement or like the online because I don't give a fuck about any of this shit. But you know, they they feel like right. well, you want attractiveness sells. It doesn't matter like whatever, but if if the social like paradigm is that uh, fat people aren't attractive at this stage, which that's in the past, my, you see paintings with fat girls, mm -hmm. and that was because that, that was the beauty standard then. The Rubenesque you know, models you know, were right. all very so. Fluffy. I think I think this th this programming changes and shifts as mm -hmm. as society moves moves uh, moves on. And I think now it's more accepted, and you'll you'll always have people that that just hate change, and they hate seeing change, and they'll they'll you know they'll they'll try to make their voice heard, like oh no, I don't want to see no fat person on 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 Gap, you I, know what I'm saying? I think it's classism. <laughs> it's too. like yo, you know, like hey, maybe a page for the fat girls, so you could, you could uh, so Gap can say hey, we have plus size uh, clothes. <laughs> that we sell, I don't know. If, I'm, I'm throwing Gap as a, an example. I don't even know if that's no, even but true. It makes but sense. the idea, you know, and then yeah, and then keep, and then also, but also don't dismiss the the young, the, the slimmer models and make it a thing where like now you're not in mm -hmm. because that's what some sometimes what winds up happening is like when we shift to one side and become no now you the other sucks mm -hmm. the other becomes. Like, you know what I mean? I don't we, think we, that's we, we bully what's happening them almost, you know? with models just because there's a lot of classism and patriarchy mm. in how women view our bodies. Like, um, when it comes to thin models, it's not so much that they're thin. It's just that some of them are really not healthy. Yes. And a few years ago, the trend that was, was a, the heroin chic the area, bony era. like gaunt, like yeah, that was. Skeletal. I never was like, eh, what the fuck. So after that, I think the push for and models were passing out, dying on the runway, and I was like, yeah, okay, that's crazy. That's, too much mm -hmm. so i think the push for healthier models turned right. into an acceptance of different potty types because even though right now i'm a size six eight right mm -hmm. i would still be considered plus size okay but you're tall too right but still just the fact that if you go by how much i should weigh according mm -hmm. to a doctor and I have seen numbers as low as 125 for me, which mm. is completely unrealistic because even when I was at 145, my family thought I was sick and about to die. Like you could see my bones. Yeah. And I was Where, how did they come up with those numbers? They must be up. They must update. The, it's called the BMI, right? Right. But it's also, it's, I think that when rich men, are rich 
they want women who are easily controlled physically. So when you are look when you are a powerful man, sometimes you don't want a woman who's your physical equal because mm. that's too much like equality. You want someone who is physically less strong than you, someone who can't take you in a fight, someone you Isn't can't that intrinsic overpower. Though? I like, think it is. Like I think those, it's subconscious. Yeah, because, I don't think it. I don't think a man are like it's like. Oh, I don't. I, I don't want this girl if because whatever. You are whatever. a man who needs to feel yeah. powerful over people. You mm-hmm. are not going to want a partner who is your equal. That is just the nature of people who want power. What about Superman and Wonder Woman? Superman and Wonder Woman are physical <laughs> equals. They're not lovers. I and think this I, is a thing. I, there's some sexual tension between uh, Superman and Wonder Superman's Woman. Superman's got his human girlfriend who is definitely not his physical equal. And Wonder Woman has her human boyfriend who is definitely not her physical equal. I think when you... But when they battle, you know what I mean? And they're fighting the, some enemy together. I think they... Hey, you know... It's almost like <laughs> a king We're and a here, queen fighting yeah. together. Mm-hmm. In ancient societies, queens were not like these pampered princesses. They fought too. They fought like right next to the king. You couldn't mm-hmm. be the queen sitting in the palace crying and knitting and shit. That didn't even make sense. Well, yes, yeah, I had to have some Machiavelli in That's this. the first wife. The second wife is always the more pampered, the more... Um, physically beautiful, the one who comes in after the actual queen is either dead or incapacitated and takes over. And it's a constant theme in that book, The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck. Dude was broke as hell and he married a woman and worked her ass to death. She had a baby in a rice field, picked the baby up and kept working. This man built his whole fortune on the backs of this woman, working her ass off. And then what happened? He went and found a pretty wife who was useless and stupid, did not do any work, but he was happy with this one. Mm -hmm. She made him feel like all the people in the world, all his enemies looked at his new wife and they're like, she's so beautiful, she's so perfect because Having a beautiful and perfect wife when he had money did something else for him. The woman he built his fortune on was dead. This new woman was now the queen and she didn't even love his old kids. You know what I'm saying? She was evil, but he was very happy with her. And I took that lesson. I think I read that book when I was like 11, 12. And I was like, oh, okay. That mm. sounds like a story my mom told me about girls who pay for their boyfriends to go to medical school. The, I heard that story so many times. Oh my girls God, are, yeah. They drop out of college and pay for their boyfriends to go to school. You ever watch Ali Wong, the comedian? Mm-hmm. She That's her story almost. And then when this motherfucker gets paid, he drops you and gets a new girl. And then she gets all the benefits of all the, sh- the work you put into him. Mm-hmm. And you get nada. And when Kanye was like, he made some song where he was like, you put all your money into this dude. And then as soon as he gets on, he dumps your ass for a white girl. That's Gold and Digger. That yeah. Gold Digger song. So I was like, he's not lying because it happens a lot mm-hmm. where women who sacrifice their whole life to because they think it's going to help them. They're going to build a family. Let me help him get on. And then when he gets on, then he'll help me get on. But it's never the reciprocal. Mm-hmm. It's like once he gets on, he drops your ass like a bad habit. Well, I, I get some cases that on. that's not true. Snoop Dogg. Some cases. You know, Snoop Dogg is still with his ride or die. You know, a lot of people don't know that. with him before he had money. Mm-hmm. Some people... They do that where they're like, well, if she could put up with me when I didn't have money and I was out here in the street fucking all these hoes, I guess we together now, mm-hmm. you know. But she manages them. She's like, you know, she's she like really She might be hug. the brains of the situation. Yeah. I definitely see that. In I think that's a good role sometimes, like, you know, with a, with a woman. Like, if 
if you have a partner if you and you could take on that role for like a superstar with if your husband just happens mm-hmm. to be a superstar sometimes you might have to like deal with some of the indiscretions or whatever but if your role is to manage him and whatever like i think like that's the you know well uh, now you're a power couple business yeah. partner you know it's different when you marry somebody now you're a partner but if you're just paying for your boyfriend to go to medical school he doesn't have any ties to you yeah. you can't sue his ass for half if you cheat on your wife in some states she gets half of that empire so a lot of these men if they built their empire with their wives they owe that woman half her money because she put in she fed into you but a lot of women do this without a wedding ring or without mm-hmm. being le- and you it's not so much about the wedding as it is about having that legal security if I'm feeding into you, I need a contract. Mm. It doesn't even have to be a marriage. I don't want to live with you. <laughs> I want to have my legal protection, though. If mm. I'm helping you get to a certain point and we're together, I need a contract. But don't, okay, isn't that like a prenup? Now, isn't that no, also no, no. isn't that also sometimes abused by women like the like where you a know they they don't they don't even do shit married. they don't even do shit and. Somehow the you know the husband they makes do it. do shit. They what put they up with his ass. That's a lot. <laughs> you don't know what it means to have to put up with a person. Sometimes, oh, I know what it means. What are you I put up with a lot of people. Right. So then you know she deserves her money. If this motherfucker wakes up every morning and calls you a bitch before you brush your teeth. Okay, look, that, that, that shit I want that you. in the prenup. You know Listen, you saying? want this is my half of money. I get to wake up and call you a bitch. You know what I'm saying? I don't want a prenup. <laughs> what I want is a contract. <clears throat> we don't even have to get married. What I okay. need you to do the is boyfriend contract. if I'm putting in to you, mm. then I deserve to reap the products of my labor. That's now, true. Okay. if we are married, that's already a type of a contract that secures, you know, something for me. Right. I don't feel like a prenup is necessary for me because I've never been with anybody who had that much money, number one. And number two, I fully expect if I'm in a relationship to leave with what I brought in Mm -hmm. and you leave what you brought in, take that shit with you and that's it. No harm, no foul. If we break up, I'm not trying to take you for everything. It's not mine, Mm -hmm. but you can't have mine either. Fuck you. Right, right, right. You know, right. but if we put in together and we build something together, I'm going to need it in writing because your ass could just get up one day right. and say, yeah, trick, Especially if you pay for his medical school. Right. You Fuck put, that shit. That's, that, that, that type of thing I think like should be the contract. Like, hey, you need, you, okay, you want me to pay for your medical school? Baby, I need okay. some money. And we're not married? Here's an right. IOU. <laughs> IOU. This will hold up in court. I'm paying, what, $4,000 for your books? Sign right here because I'm gonna need my money back. Yep. I love you and all, but shit, money doesn't have anything to do with love. I know that because my mom told my dad she she went and got a lawyer. <laughs> my dad did not want to pay her any money for anything. And she was tired of asking him for money all the fucking time. So she went and got a lawyer. And her lawyer told my daddy that he owed my mama $30,000 a year in domestic engineering costs. What? Yes, because she was taking care of our home, raising four kids, plus a foster kid. I like that term. And Domestic engineering. Yes. It's called managing a fucking household. <laughs> all okay. Right, all and right. his business partner, because the business is called G and C, not just C. Okay. My mom is Gretchen and my dad is Charlie. Her G comes before the C. So, yes, you got to. Well, he's just be- being chivalrous. You know, ladies first, well, Gretchen. <laughs> Attorney Fred Stokes Esquire was being generous when he said 30 because 
I would have demanded 50. Fuck it. That's four kids and a husband. That's $50,000 back in 1989. Yo, okay. that's what I was thinking too. Like, <laughs> $50,000 back then probably be like way more right now. Like $200,000. Okay. Probably. Needless to say, they didn't get a divorce and my mom got a brand new grand marquee that year. It wasn't exactly thirty thousand, but it was a new car and a promise. Your dad waited out the office like, "All right, like, divorce or thirty thousand oh, dollars a year? I got to freaking pay you out." You don't want to divorce somebody who's singing around the house. It's cheaper to keep her. It's cheaper to keep her. I mean, my mom would wake up. I didn't even know that song, and she would just go, "Hey, ask your daddy. Say, say, daddy. Mama said it's cheaper to keep her." I'm like, "Why is she making me do this?" Oh, no. And she's just, it's cheaper to keep it. <coughs> and it is. Oh my God. It was. And now they're all in love with each other. That's they just awesome. had to get through that one part. Yeah. But I believe that's healthy. Because if she had just sat there and not said anything, she would have felt intimidated. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I'm, I'm glad my mom stood up for herself. And I'm glad that she loved us enough to say, look, this isn't healthy. I cannot raise these children and beg you for every single dollar, you know, because it was like that. When you live in a house where your husband controls every single dollar and you have nothing of your own because you left your job to be a homemaker, he should be compensating you for leaving your job to become a homemaker because you left your job to raise these children, she could have still went to work. They mm. would have just had to pay thousands of dollars in damn childcare, but she didn't have to stop her job. My mom was making good money when she quit to become our stay at home mom. And she went through a lot of like lifestyle changes. And when you used to be independent and your partner's like holding all the purse strings, that's a little infuriating is i mean you're a grown person yeah you know and then i saw this one guy he was like ladies would you stay home if your husband paid you sixty five thousand dollars a year to be a stay-at-home mom i was like hell yeah because that's more than i'm making right now but let me tell you how it's gonna go i promise you a hot meal every day don't mean i'm gonna cook it we're gonna have uh hello fresh the chef from down the street. I'm not saying I'm cooking every day. Hell, for sixty-five thousand, you can DoorDash every day. Okay, and what's next? Keep the house clean. Merry maids. What else? What? Wait, this, is, this does not sound very fair. House. It is. It's my money. I'm paying them. And then I'll be at the beach drunk every goddamn day. Thank you for that extra $20,000. And now I don't even have to go to work. Fuck this shit. Hell yeah. Marry me, you son of a bitch. I'm about to live sweet. Okay. When can we do this? You said 65000 Word is bond. I quit my job today. I am there for you. When you moving into my house, oh, you want me to move into your house? Mm, that's going to cost more because now I got to wake up and deal with you every day. That's another 65000 Oh, my. To. You are expensive. Hell, yeah. If you don't want to wake up with a knife in your neck because I can't stand your ass, look, <laughs> I don't want to deal with you. I'm here. I got married. I'm here. I'm... The house is clean. No, I didn't do it. But I paid the woman who came in here and did it. That's coming out of my pocket. Okay, it's not coming in your pocket. It's coming out of my pocket. Okay, okay. I can pay a lady to come in here and okay, clean I, up every So it's week. like a business investment. Like sometimes you outsource, like the husband's Damn paying right. you, but you're outsourcing a little bit and then you keep, it's a business move. I why, get it. Why should you care this shit is clean? And then I'll cook <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> I mean, just because you didn't... Hey, if you're bored, you'll cook. You know what you'll do? You'll bake. That's what you'll do. Like, you know what? I, I want to bake some cookies. I want to bake some pie. Baking. You know what I mean? But it leads the cook into like, a, a proper chef, you know? Hey, and then I don't have to go to work either. Hell, I don't mind cooking. I'll cook. All... Hell, I'll be at Whole Foods like the rest of those Beckys. And they're like, I'll take that cut. Yeah, no, that one. Move that one. Now sprinkle some salt on it. No pepper. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> if you spice it up, he'll know I didn't cook it. So just put that salt on it. Put it in the bag. <laughs> I'll take it home and heat it up. Oh man. All right. Let's uh let's wrap this up. So what do you wanna what do you wanna uh plug? What's the name of your website? How can people find you? Okay. So our YouTube channel is Art Mama Moves, and we have a website, artmamamoves.com, and is under construction. I will send the new link as we get it. And um our show is called 100 Mondays. It's every Monday night on YouTube now. You can check it out every Monday night. What's today? Sunday. So at eight o'clock is a new show every week. Okay. And please submit videos. Um, we're going to have a board meeting coming up because Art Mama Moves is a nonprofit. How do they submit videos? Submit videos to artmamamoves at gmail.com. And um, once we get the email, then we'll respond to you. And there's no submission fees. So you don't have to worry about having to have money. You can do a video submission. When we have live shows, I'll let you know when we have the artist call. Um, and we look forward to having a live show, hopefully in December. But you can reach us at Art Mama Moves on YouTube. We also have 100 Mondays weekly show on YouTube. And um, that's pretty much it for right now. And we're also on Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that. Art Mama Moves. Mm-hmm. Okay. Art Mama Moves and 100 Mondays. I check the Art Mama Moves one a lot more than I check the 100 Mondays, though, because my media person is supposed to be checking the 100 Mondays. But I do check it. So okay. um, reach out to us. We're always looking for artists and performing artists lately we've had some metaphysical artists who do like uh readings and who make teas and like all natural products so there's a nice cross section of people okay sweet well thank you everybody for coming and watching the underlab podcast with me your host your boy jay evil eye thanks for coming out god bless good night i'm stealing that from russell simmons Bye-bye. <laughs>